and you're still waiting. Hi guys, this is Thundee E from Board of Work and welcome to our weekly hangout. And of course we have uh, some, but at least our best regular participant, it's some gadget guy from somegadgetguy.com. Hey everybody, I actually woke up a little earlier. I've had more coffee to drink today, so we're ready to wrap up all of this week's most exciting tech stories for your viewing enjoyment. And also, we just had we got another surprise regular guest. It is Andrew Cam from Wolverburn. How you doing? Andrew? Hey, Andrew. Uh, good morning, guys. Yeah, sorry I'm late. I was, I was watching the game and it got away from me. <laughs> Wait, did we win? Uh, no, it's still going on right now. It started late. It's uh, we're up we're up one zero. All right, nice. It's, it's nice. The third minute. Thanks. No, okay. So so pardon my uber geekiness to not knowing what. The game is. Who are we talking? Who's playing? Uh, Arsenal uh, English soccer team is playing. I didn't know you guys were 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 footballers. Yes. Oh crap, man. Okay, yeah, we we could have been like jamming on this for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, you know. Um... Oh no worries. No, I'm just happy. I'm happy to finally figure out. So like, that's another thing that we can nerd out about online. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Uh, we have a couple of things. Uh, anyone has an? I have a few announcements. Any announcements from you guys? Um, Andrew, any announcements you want to state up before we start? Uh, no. Uh, just keep your eye on mobileburn.com and our sister site dailymobile.net. We're going to be doing uh, a couple of things in a few weeks, so look out for that. Care to share any more? Just mystery, regular holiday contest type of stuff. Ooh. Yeah. All right, guys, you can win some stuff from Mobile Burn. Remember that. Keep your eye out. I sound like a disc jockey. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about you, uh, some gadget guy? Anything you want to say? Actually, to I was going to say, the same, say it kind of the same way that Andrew just did. Like, I can't really tell you right now, but I've got some cool stuff coming up, and uh, it's the spirit of giving. It's the season of giving, and in the spirit of giving, um, we're going to have some uh, some cool stuff, especially as I'm also getting to the end of the year, which means I've just got to clean out my office from stuff that mm -hmm. maybe we've done recent reviews on, so uh, I'll be happy to give it to uh, places where I think it'll it'll ha it'll get a good, good a good home for right. some of this gear. All right, cool, cool. Um, yeah, same here. I have, I have some giveaways coming up. I really can't announce any of them either, but uh, I have maybe about three or four coming up, so stay tuned, guys. They will run through. So in case you didn't get anything for Christmas, you probably would get something from us. Yeah. Which would be, would be pretty cool. And um, or, or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah. If you didn't get the Hanukkah gift you wanted, then... I'm sorry. Sure I do not... I'm, yeah. Let's not mention Kwanzaa. I'm just going to... Oh, no. I love that. Kwanzaa. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't no, do that right now. you're not a Kwanzaa guy? Really? Me neither. I'm the Kwanzaa guy here? Seriously? I, I don't do Kwanzaa either. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, man. No. no, no. I mean, you do realize, though, the, the ridiculousness of the pale skin being the one who's, who's into Kwanzaa. Okay, uh, let's just put it this way. I am from Nigeria, and back right. home, we never heard of Kwanzaa. Oh, no, I get it. So, yeah. so for us, it's like... Huh? I totally understand. I just yeah, I was, uh, I, I was the same way. My my family's from Jamaica, and uh, when I was when I was in New Jersey, and like that's when I first learned about Kwanzaa. I was looking at, but like, what are you guys talking about? I'm like, you know, it's the day after Christmas. I go, you mean Boxing Day? I know that one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, Happy Kwanzaa, man. Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> um, a couple other things. Uh, I want to thank all, all our fans. We hit 30,000 subscribers, so we appreciate all the support and people subscribing. Nicely done. Keep subscribing, guys, so we can make more videos, you know, and uh, put stuff Get out there. Get those shares out there. It's how we bring you guys cool stuff. Yes, and also announcing we just started another channel. It's a gaming channel, strictly gaming videos and giveaways for gaming stuff and all that fun gaming, you know, atmosphere since we have all three new consoles now. Well, Nintendo Wii came out last year, but it's called Board Gamers, so it's B-O-O-R-E-D and Gamers, you know, together. And, uh, yeah, we have, like, two videos up there, so definitely check it out. Subscribe to that channel also. Uh, we'll have the links for you, and uh, we'll see if we can put up some games and gameplay. All right, let's uh, get the show on the road. A um, couple of things this week. The biggest one, of course, is the Xbox One launch. So uh, I want to get your thoughts on the launch itself, impressions of the consoles, if you tried it out, and uh, just your thoughts moving forward, because also Microsoft just announced they sold a million units of the Xbox One. So fire away, guys. 
Yeah, I only played it briefly. Uh, went over to a friend's house who bought one. Uh, I still haven't decided like uh, how quickly I'm gonna get it because I've been spending all my money on all the other devices. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Like I felt comfortable with the controls. The TV thing was a little slow from what I expected. Like uh, when he was he set it up where he's like doing the cable, like do, using the voice commands to get it to go, go through the guide and all that. Yeah, that one was a little bit slower than I thought it would be. But the promise of it and the idea of it, what it's going to be capable of doing, that really intrigued me. So I'm going to definitely be keeping my eyes out on that. All right, cool. How about you, uh, Mr. PS4? I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a PS4 yet. I'm, I'm probably going to get one uh, the end of next month, considering what the end of next month is. Uh, no, actually, you know what? The thing I have to say is I, I, I think for as badly as Microsoft sort of fumbled their initial discussion of the Xbox One. This launch is has gone much smoother than I thought it would. Just the actual logistics of it and moving product, getting yeah. those pre-orders fulfilled, getting boxes in stores. I, I actually have to say I've been pretty impressed with how they've handled it. Um, actually, both Sony and Microsoft this year, this, this launch, um, we didn't have the same sort of rabid lines of people waiting for these devices at GameStops and stuff. I know people were lining up, but it wasn't. it didn't have the same frenzy feel as previous uh, console releases have had. And uh, I think they've done a really good job of managing, you know, how boxes actually got into consumers' hands. Um, I totally agree with Andrew. I think I think there's there's a there's just something about having an intermediary box between your TV and your cable box, which is always going to introduce just a just a little bit of a lag. Um, you know, what's funny is it's not as bad as like Time Warner's DVR. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because Time Warner's DVR is completely non-responsive. You'll hit the button and then wait 20 seconds and then think, oh well, it must not have registered the button press, and then go to hit it again, and then you've skipped two channels. Like it's completely, it's it's a complete mess. So it's not that bad. It's not nearly as bad as that. But if you're used to like, uh, you know, like a, a cable feed directly into your TV with it, it's really responsive. There's that little momentary hitch as the Xbox has to send a signal to your cable, and then your cable then reports back, and then your Xbox displays a new channel. Yeah. Um, I, I, having played with it a little bit, I don't, I, I don't think it's an issue, and I know that there are going to be some people who are going to complain about that, and I think they're silly. Yeah, okay. Um, looks like Sam has joined us, but he's Mike and. I don't think it's on yet. So whenever you're ready, uh, Sam, just let us know when you you can talk. Um, in terms of the Xbox One, I think I agree with you, uh, uh, some gadget guy, that the launch was actually handled pretty well. I got mine from the Microsoft Store, and I have to give up Microsoft props for the way they handle their stores. Their stores, they make everything like a little mini event, even though there really wasn't that much fanfare in in terms of long lines. But you know, they had a DJ, they had music, they had little snacks for people. So and everyone was just playing games while we were waiting. Nice. So there was really no set lines until about maybe 15 minutes before, where they said, okay. Everyone who we gave a black wristband because uh, you already paid for your console, please line up here so you can pick it up. And I was at the back of the line, and I got my console in 10 minutes. That was how fast it went through. Wow, that's you know, awesome. They, they were really organized in doing it. So it was, it was pretty cool to see that. Um, in terms of the console and some of the TV features, I agree with you. It's, it is a little slow, and that also comes from the fact that um, uh, cable providers are not providing integration with their software properly. I mean, Comcast came out the other day and said, you know, the Xbox can do whatever, we can do whatever the Xbox does, you know, in terms of right. multimedia functionality. So they're still holding that, you know, sentiment back saying, you know, we want to have that proprietary feel to it. You know, we still own TV as a whole. But like you said, the promise of it makes a lot of sense, and uh, it's very nice. One of the things I really like about it is is Xbox is taking the cue from Android. Uh, everything on the console is an app. Everything uh-huh. from the Blu-ray player is an mm-hmm. app. The CD player is an app. The uh, I mean, you name it. Almost everything on the console. So basically, updating things on the console just become updating apps. Mm. Oh, and, that's smart. So that, like, yeah. if there's if there's some random update to Xbox Music, you don't have to wait for an entire new exactly yeah. like, to firmware update. update. Mm-hmm. And and it it really is nice. Like I saw that I was like, this is kind of annoying. I'm installing apps, but I started thinking about. It, I'm like, well, it just means that if uh, Xbox, my Blu-ray player is, uh, is is having some software issues, they just have to just send out a release for it, like in a week, and I have that update instead of waiting, you know, till the next big, uh, you know, Xbox yeah. update itself. Yeah. 
and that makes the the crashes less likely because a lot of time when you're updating firmware, there might be unintended consequences. If they're just right. updating a specific app, most likely it's going to be contained to that thing. So yeah, you might not be able to play the CD player for that day where they they got to send out the re-release of the update, but you'll still be able to use the rest of your system as intended. So that's mm-hmm. going to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's it, it, it is nice, and also, um, you know, the voice controls uh, su- work surprisingly well. Other than in the TV, like you mentioned, Andrew, where you know you're trying to change channel, you say watch ESPN, and it's, it feels like it's kind of thinking. Yeah. But when you're doing anything else on the console, if you're like you know snap this, go to this, watch, you know, open this game, you know, it will actually open it up. The only thing that it doesn't do well is if your game is on the disc. You can't mention the name of the game. You have to say go to disk. So, oh, okay. Yeah, because it's not necessarily installed uh, on your system. Who's reading down there? Uh, Sam, is that you, man? Okay, stop being the stalker. Yeah, you're getting a little uh, stalkerish. <laughs> yeah, but you know, besides that, it, it, the voice controls work very, very well and allow you to jump in and out of different. I mean, I was really surprised how, like, I stopped using the controller to do anything. Like now on the console, I just bark out commands left and right. I'm like, <laughs> Xbox, do this, and my roommate now does this thing. Whenever I say Xbox, go home. He says you're drunk because it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> So it sounds like me telling my driver to take me home or something, you That's know. Awesome. So, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I like what they've done initially. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes forward. But I think, in terms of kind of just looking at the PS4 and the Xbox One, that I think Microsoft has really brought in a package that once people see it, they kind of get exactly what it is, you know. And Connect is very, 2.0 is very responsive. I mean, I walk into the room, my roommate's playing a game, and it's like, hi, Annabong, like like that, you know. That's exactly. kind of creepy in the coolest possible yeah, way. Yeah, it is. It is creepy in the coolest possible way. So I'm like, ah, it knows me now personally. I'm a little <laughs> scared. <laughs> Has it gotten to the point where, like, it recognizes, like, hey, it's 10.30, you know, you want to watch your special movies as it does Timothy Levin. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't. It hasn't gone to that point. Um, who knows? It might. It might get into that point. That's uh, you know where it can eventually tell you stuff. You know what you need to do in terms of games. Um, yeah, Call of Duty does look kind of. Mm. <laughs> really? Yeah, to me, it, it doesn't look that doesn't look that great. Um, but uh, kill. I have Killing Instinct. That's the other game. I'm waiting for two other games to come in. But that looks much better. That looks like a next-gen title. Um, you know, while Call of Duty kind of looks like, okay, they, they bumped it a little bit, and, you know, it's got a better frame rate, but it doesn't look... I mean, Call of Duty never looked like a great game in the first place, so to me, that's really not a good barometer for it. Yeah, I don't. I think that's more an issue with the developer than the actual system, because, you know... Uh, Infinity and uh, Active, Active, whoever they've never really put that much, yeah, they never put that much effort into having like an amazing looking game. Especially like if you play like Battlefield Four and then you go and compare the two, it's like you don't really get that sense that they really trying that hard. So I'm pretty sure it's the same thing here. Like, but I've I've seen other games like uh, uh, Rise looks really good. Uh, what was the other one that we played? Uh, I think it was Killer Instinct. Um, that I didn't actually get the chance to like play that with the controls, but my friend was doing it. It was pretty good. Uh, Forza, Forza Five is a beauty. Yeah, I mean, Forza, I was I got to play Forza Five. That that looks incredible. That, I mean, if you're talking about car porn, I mean that mm-hmm. is straight up. You know, Why we gotta I call mean, it car porn? Huh? Because <laughs> because it is. That's how. It, <laughs> I mean, I was I was I was at the store and I'm just I was I was in line while some guy was playing. I'm like. Oh. I just want to, to touch that. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Well, hopefully you didn't touch the guy because that would have been okay. Okay, okay, stop, stop. No, no, no. You don't want to touch the guy playing. You just want no. to meet with the game. Come on. Exactly. Come on. Yes. I mean, Sam, what what did you do this morning? I went out and I ran. Oh, actually, no. I finished building my computer, and that's part of the issues why I couldn't log in at first because uh, okay. uh, my audio okay. wasn't working. My front panel, apparently, I plugged it in co- incorrectly, so I have to open that up and redo it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's right, what that's happens awesome. when you come home at 2 a.m. in the morning stumbling, and then you start fixing the computer. Yeah, yeah. He decided <laughs> to build this, redo this build at 2 a.m. after you know maybe a few drinks or more. Who knows? So it I'm surprised it's few. actually working. It was actually quite a few. I, I was actually when I woke up this morning, I turned it on. I'm like, God. 
God, thank God I didn't like barf in it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, it could have been worse, way worse than just the front panel, you know? Yeah, that could have yeah. been worse. That yeah. really would have been. Uh, okay, so Sam, any thoughts on the Xbox One launch and uh, console? Well, I, I, uh, I got a chance to um, get my hands on the Xbox like a day before release at the uh, the last Pepcom event, Hulu was actually showing his Hulu Plus. Mm-hmm. So I, I really didn't get my uh, a chance to play the games and whatnot, but I got a chance to basically just use the UI, and it's very fluid. It's really fluid. It's a beautiful UI. Um, there is when people initially. Uh, you know, started saying they weren't really sure about Windows 8, the new Windows 8 interface and whatnot, and everybody was basically saying this is the new unification um, uh, UI for uh, Microsoft. The Xbox One basically just stamps its foot down and says, this is it. It's it's amazing how it looks like Windows 8, but it does so much more. It, it's yeah. it's I, I I can't say how much I like that interface, and that's that's really what struck me. It was, it's right. an amazing interface. It's, well, it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned that. I I posted a video yesterday, and one of the uh, viewers actually said something about that. I said it's really funny how everyone is praising and liking this UI when they supposedly hate Windows 8. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is the format for it because you got to think about like what you're comparing to. A lot of people when they see Windows 8 on a computer, they compare it. Well, I knew Windows 7. I felt comfortable. If you're comparing uh, the Xbox interface to like most smart TV interfaces, Google mm-hmm. TV, all of those, this is definitely better than you because it organizes all that information way more efficiently. You press one thing and it happens. Mm-hmm. My brother has an old smart TV from like a 2010, and it's so slow. Like the res- the response and lag is it's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. So what do you think this does to the smart TV market in a sense? Um, especially with how we've seen all the different convoluted UIs left and right. You know, we, we all know that Google TV has been a huge failure. Um, Samsung has tried to do its own stuff on the TVs. LG has. You have different boxes. You have the Chrome, Chromecast. Mm-hmm. Um, how does this play in that market in the sense where you know people are now looking at the UI and saying, oh, this looks fantastic and it looks like it's easy to use. Do you think that would influence them a little bit more in purchasing the console, or or no? Or will you think it will affect that market in any uh, form or fashion? I still think the consoles have a tough climb for non-hardcore gamers. You know, I, I I still think that there's 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 this idea of who buys a console, and there's this idea of what services you can use on your TV. And I think there are a lot of casual gamers and a lot of people who want to do streaming video and that kind of networking on their TV that I don't know that they've completely merged those ideas. So especially when people look at buying a hundred dollar or not even like hundred, like a sixty dollar Roku um, or a five hundred dollar console, uh, there's still a ways to go in communicating what the benefits might be for mm-hmm. a family looking to make that kind of media or entertainment investment. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. But one one thing I'd like to basically point out is that um, with the whole movement of the whole the whole cable cutter movement, and the idea that you now can almost get a la carte um, programming, not from your cable provider, but rather from internet channels like YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, and things of that nature. When you combine that with basically that Xbox's um, HDMI pass through. It might be exactly what people are looking for. It might just be that extra oomph that makes people cut your cable. Because I can see myself basically saying, I have Netflix. I don't have to switch between multiple devices now. I can just do the pass-through through my um, uh, through my Xbox, use only the over-the-air channels with my, um, from my uh, antenna, and just you know use all my online services with my Xbox, and that's it. I don't need anything else. I don't have to change this device to that device or what device. I have it all passed through my Xbox, and that's it. Plus, you can get HBO now without having. Yeah, with HBO Plus, exactly. Yeah, you, you Bowman! Having, having a subscription. Hey, what's up, Bowman? How you doing? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> really? Oh, come on, all right. He's getting arrested. <laughs> They're coming for me. They're coming for me. All right. Hold on. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, man. Seriously. <laughs> Moment, okay. I mean, you call us in the middle of a heist. What's going on, man? <laughs> I mean, A for effort, but come on. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> Bowman's outside right oh, now. Okay. He is hey, off the reservation. Yeah, I'm, actually... I'm outside. I'm actually about to hop on the bus right now. Okay. Um, how about... 
<laughs> well, we, we'll be online for a while, so join us when you You know can. what? Just because I did this last week doesn't mean you have to do it too late. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm yeah, doing yeah. it better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just called you out of that one. Ouch, whatever, man. Yeah. All right. So no, man. With with the uh, with the Xbox One, I think uh, you are right, guys. That you know, it still has a lot to prove to consumers to say, why should I spend five hundred bucks for all that? But it it still leaves a compelling argument there that you know, there's a lot that you can do with with this box overall. I mean, the SkyDrive integration is very smooth. Um, which allows you, uh, for instance, you can record gameplay on there. So I've been doing five-minute gameplay clips, and it's on my SkyDrive, and I just pull off my computer and edit and use, plus Skype and all those things. So I think, you know, it, eventually, I, I probably it will hit that rhythm when it hits that $300 price point. That's yep. where most people can go, you know what, I, I can I can probably start looking at that as being, like, the convergence for all my media, you know, in my in my home. Yeah, and I, mean, I think it's going to be the plus device because a lot of people, they have their cable box, they've got the Blu-ray player, they've got the, a Roku or something. For the, those type of people, it might be an easier sell to say, all right, well, you can consolidate all of those into one device and then you have the addition of all these gaming options. So if you're just someone that's like looking for Netflix or something, that's not going to appeal to you. But yeah. if you can convince someone, you can get Netflix and these other things, and it's all integrated, like Sam was mentioning, that's going to be a selling point. And I, and I think we're also kind of cresting that peak of, you know, when tablets first came out. There was no reason to buy a tablet, but there were things you could do on tablets that you'd like doing it on the tablet better. You know, it was a, it was a solution in search of a problem. And if you're not a hardcore gamer, <laughs> I kind of feel like the Xbox One is a number of great solutions for problems that people haven't discovered yet. That yeah, is very true. Yeah, really and uh, yeah, and also, if you own an Xbox One, just to put it out there, make sure you get Microsoft's uh, three-year warranty for sixty-nine bucks. It's sorely needed. Just, just do it. I'm just gonna say one word to convince everyone: Red Ring of Death. Death. And, <laughs> end of story. And, no, except, except this console though, um, it has crashed in me twice. No, it's not crashed. I apologize. Sorry. The apps have, you know, died off or crashed in me too. It doesn't affect the console. The, which is a good thing in the sense like I've opened certain apps and they've crashed and um, like typical Windows I just decided to reboot which takes about literally <laughs> 17 seconds Did you try reboot. turning it off and on again <laughs> and it, it came back up and the startup time is pretty short it's about between 17 to 20 seconds or so so it's you know it's uh, fairly good um, but anyway we have a few questions here <laughs> on a couple of topics um, first one was from Raymond Angla, Anglada, I used to use iOS for the first time before Nexus 5 came out. Why sharing on iOS has no option? Google with 4.4 has passed iOS, in my opinion. So that is not a question. That is just a statement, but thank you. <laughs> oh, but you know, why, why iOS doesn't have sharing options oh, is why because should, Apple, yeah. Apple has yeah. decided that they know better how to manage your files than you do. Yeah, and that is my biggest complaint about iOS. Like every iOS device that I've written a review about, I just constantly mention... Android kills this in sharing options. Yep. Yes, it's very true. And the next one is from Nabili Reani. When is Android 4.4 going to be on the Galaxy S4? I've been hearing January. Yeah, um, yeah but I'm thinking that's international, though, first, so that might be a little... Oh, I yeah. mean, Nabil well, didn't it, specify where... It's really by carrier, per se, right? It's, it's, by car it's by carrier now, isn't it? Because Samsung probably could have it done in, a, in, in any amount of time, but it's depending on your carrier for it to um, to hit you, right? To hit yeah, if you're, if you're, like, on AT&T or T-Mobile, you'll most likely get it within a couple of weeks of the international version, because that's what happened with 4.3. Verizon, sorry. Yeah. Verizon, they're going to be doing testing out the wazoo, so you're going to be waiting a while. Yeah, but my guess is January because that's ACC is going to have it ready by then. Uh, and they're Sony, already fighting the yeah. Moto X with it already releasing on AT and T, T Mobile, and, and Verizon. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're getting that I'm, done. I'm trying to update quickly. mine right now. See if he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to update my Nexus Seven for the longest time, and still nothing. Yeah, I'm so. in the same boat with my Nexus Seven. No, they 7. they pulled the Nexus Seven one, I think. Oh, I remember they, there was like a, just put it was back a bug. Oh, okay, yeah. I remember yeah, I tried I, to get it, and then it said update available, and I was about to tap it, and I realized my, my tablet wasn't charged enough, so I plugged it back oh, in, snap. and when I went back the next day, it didn't go through. Here we go, guys. Android 4.4 KitKat update. 
Well, Next look video. at that. AT&T, man, gotta love that speed, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, that brings up to our next uh, topic, which is Android 4.4 on the Moto X. Do you think that will help the Moto X? And also, do you like the? I, I like the speed that Google has done in bringing this to Motorola pretty quickly. Uh, thoughts? I don't think consumers know enough or care. I think Motorola has a larger problem with mindshare in the United States, trying to rebuild a reputation that was somewhat sullied by the various droids that Verizon put out, Droid. putting their own, putting the no no no, it's it's that Verizon put their own branding on top of who made the phone, and so Motorola was making these great phones that no yeah. one knew were Motorolas. They knew they were droids. Yeah, they were yeah. Verizon. So droids, yeah. now they've got to rebuild all of. It's almost like they're starting from scratch, rebuilding mm -hmm. a new customer base who are going to go out there to buy. Motorola's, um, yeah. they they have probably a two year slog after the Moto X to show that they can still build compelling hardware and rebuild an ecosystem which was kind of dashed on the rocks. Yeah, and I think this is more of like a a goodwill building block for Motorola because you hear the hardcore Android geeks all the time complain about updates, and now they're saying, look, KitKat came out a month ago, we've already got it on your phone. Look yeah. at what HTC, they're telling you end of January. Samsung's telling you, uh, well, they're not telling you, but the rumors say January. Right. LG and Sony haven't even said anything, so they're probably like March. So by the time they get it, another uh, version of Android will already be out. I mean, so even if that, my LG don't... Optimus G Pro is still on 4.1. You know, I, yeah. We haven't seen any compelling software support out of LG on their premier oh, releases yeah. for the last year. That that's that's very true, and it's it's sad to see, especially with LG, the strides that they've made starting from the Nexus 4 last year, yeah. is that they're not keeping up to date with you know software like you support. need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely I mean, need to. Uh, you can put all the best hardware into a phone. If I don't have good software support, it's kind of scary after about a year. Once you start thinking about security exploits and yeah. what other bugs you can run into if they're not getting patched up. And that was my issue with Sony because uh, yeah. I really like the Xperia's from the past couple of years, but Sony has just been so slow. They've been the last for every update, and I just got tired of that. And I was like, I really can't see myself spending my money to buy this phone. Was that the same issue with the PlayStation 3? Because I just got one late, so I'm not even sure how this updates. With were. software? No, yeah, actually, no. every time I turn on my PS3, there's yeah, that's some the update. It's the exact yeah, opposite. The, the opposite It's problem. the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that yeah. what it is with gaming consoles nowadays, though? Like, everything. I, I put in uh, Call of Duty, it said, install update. I yeah. downloaded Kill, Killing State. I downloaded the game. It told me, install update. I'm like, I just downloaded <laughs> you, you couldn't from just you. put the update in, <laughs> the, in the download. Yeah, that, that's kind of crazy now with the updates. People are getting really crazy. And it, it looks as though people are just releasing stuff that, aren't, that isn't finished yet. Mm -hmm. And then when you put it in, it's like, oh, we finally finished it. Install update. Like, really? Why don't you just give me the full game in the first place? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, with Killer Instinct, I kind of gave them a pass because it was free. Oh and, yeah, it's Killer Instinct. Though. And and oh. then you you pay twenty dollars for characters, but you know that's beside the point. Ooh, twenty uh, bucks for characters. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Um, so uh, so I guess the Moto X on uh, Motorola is a nice step, you know, in the right direction for them, but it's not something that um will change people's mindset. But I'd like to see how it looks and runs on the Moto X because it would be interesting to see what kind of little custom additions Motorola might add to that. Well, and also I think this becomes a really good proof of concept for, just like with Motorola pushing optimization over brute force hardware, you know, going with the dual core processor and the 720p screen, yeah. that KitKat now becomes the great test bed for how do phones actually perform mm -hmm. on this new stack, that this new software is supposed to be optimized for more power efficient devices, especially entry level and mid range devices. So, so basically, so, we should not see any slowdowns from any device. Well, not only that, but 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 we we should start seeing. You know, like I don't think there's going to be a huge performance gain for you know our Qualcomm 600 quad cores, Qualcomm 800 series quad cores. But are we going to start seeing those little lags, those little stutters disappear from our lower powered devices? Like if the HTC One Mini can get a KitKat update. And it really does improve the performance on it. Now we've got a new talking point for entry level and mid range phones for your general consumer. Mm -hmm. Very true. And moving on to other smartphone devices, Nokia released the Lumia 2520, their first uh, 
Windows 8.1. To, I was about to say Android tablet. Wow. Ah, ha, ha. You're tired. Freudian slip. You wish. Look at you. I actually don't wish. I hate Android tablets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there just went the rest of our audience. Yeah. <laughs> Windows uh, Windows 8.1 tablet and the Lumia 1520, the massive behemoth that we have here. So uh, thoughts on the device? Jerks. Oh, you have the what is that? That's the flip case. How is the flip case? It's pretty good. It's just like the the one that came with the the 928 or whatever whatever it was. 928 had a flip case. No, there was one that they've released this year that had like a little flip case. I forget which one oh, okay. it is. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Like the back has the, like the clip on that you, or like if you want to do the wireless charging, has charging, that type of yeah. clip. Yeah, and it has the. But does it have wireless charging? No. <laughs> no, because AT and T gimped it. Yeah, and then the the flip case allows you to like, prop it up on a table and just leave it there. So it's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, that does make me really sad about the wireless charging. It makes yeah, me the, really the, the wireless sad. charging on this yeah. thing is is annoying because I have all these wireless charges around my house. Yeah, <laughs> and, you can't use them. Can't use it. I mean, unless you get the wait. Now I, I'm I'm even confused about that. If you get the PMA case, will that work with your QI charger, or you have to no. use a PMA charger? Yeah, I think you have to use a PMA charger. Yeah, I'm not sure because I know PMA is a different standard, but uh, I think the the charger that Nokia put out. Might support multiple ones. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that one, though. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I remember I mean, Nokia's was Q compa- the Qi compatible, and they made, oh. like, a big point of that. But I've seen other ones that are Qi compatible that also work with PMA, but it's very rare. Oh, God. It's so useless. So, anyway, uh, I guess he doesn't have wireless there. charging. Let's just throw that out there. <laughs> There's a kit. Yeah, the, the international version definitely has it. Has the AT&T yeah. version, you need to get a special case. Yeah, and this, this, those are one of the problems I have with the device. I mean, other than I mean, I think it's the best Windows phone uh, available. But yeah, the exactly. wireless charging out there, and also 16 gigabytes of storage. I understand now they cut the price down to nine, um, nine, uh, ninety-nine dollars, which is great. The pricing is actually pretty cool. But that 16 gigabytes, I ran out of it quickly when I installed yeah. four games of my. I was trying to do a gaming video. I installed mm-hmm. Modern Combat, FIFA. And something else, and it told me you're running out of memory. And Windows Phone, yet you can't install games on your SD card or right. apps on your SD card. So I'm like, this is just it's useless. problematic. Yeah, yeah. It, it is problematic. But in terms of the device itself, the, the um, what, what do you guys think? Uh, I know Sam, you haven't had a chance. Yeah, to, I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. To, to yeah. take a look at it, but uh, where were you, Andrew? Yeah, I'm gonna post my review on Monday, but. I think this is... So you can't the, tell us anything? Is that what it is? No, I can tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Embargo, NDA. Yeah. This is the best uh, Lumia that they've done so far if you can handle large phones. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that say this is just too big because it's bigger than the Galaxy Note, and it, it's because it's wide. But a lot of people are going to say, man, when you look at this screen, uh, it's the best screen. It's the best screen Nokia's done. It's IPS. It's huge, six inches. Uh the, it has the Snapdragon, and everyone knows that Windows phones typically having the dual core versus quad core hasn't really been a big issue. But you see, like little areas, like when you're loading an app, it doesn't take as long to load as it did before. So when you see those little tiny performance bumps, that's when you start to really appreciate the difference in hardware. And yeah. I love the feel of it. I love the material. The camera is solid. My and of course Windows Phone, they're getting better with the app situation. So it's really, if you can stomach or if you can handle the larger device, this is going to be the Lumia that you want. Well, and, and especially for me, it's it's been watching them clean up the performance on things like the camera. Because the thing's rocking a 20 megapixel camera, and a dual-core processor is choking on the 1020. Mm-hmm. You know, when you fire up the, the pure view camera on the 1020, there is that lag, there is that, that halt as the camera just needs to initialize, and you're chewing through all this raw data. And not seeing that happen on the 1520 is really promising. So especially for how audacious some of those specs are, some of those big numbers on the, uh, the 1520, that Qualcomm 800 comes in clutch in making sure that we've actually got the horsepower to pull that stuff off. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, um, yeah, uh, this is exclusive to AT&T in the U.S., just to answer a question. Um, I think this is the best display for any smartphone in the market, not on a Windows phone, because I took it outside with all my phones and I couldn't see shit with the rest. Like that, to me, the display was that crisp and clear. And I, I, 
I love the job they've done in this play. It really is like taking a little pocket, you know, TV with me on the go and like, <laughs> yeah, I can watch the movies, you know. Yeah, but what's up with that? Like the bottom of the phone. It's like, what's that extra? What What is Windows gonna do with that? When Windows Phone has so much wasted space, man. No, the bottom is where they put the the hardware buttons. No, he's talking about this when I slide up, and then you can see. Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I don't I don't say extra space. It's just basically the UI bumping through because yeah, if just you leave it, you, it's, that's it's the just, end basically. It, yeah, uh, if you leave it like this, it's to me well, it's what, what you can't do anything there other than it's literally even if they take it off, it just stop. No, 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 no. It's, at an it, app. I, I actually I I do have an answer for that. Everything about Metro is to indicate further movement. So it's why it's why like when you've got side scrolling menus that the the text will travel off the edge of the screen it's to indicate that you can keep going. And so oh. when you find on on Windows Phone 7 they used to have a black bar that would run vertically along the side to give you some space where you could scroll and to indicate you could long press. On the on the Windows Phone 8 it's to indicate that you could continue adding tiles down there. There is space for you to start putting more things there. Um, they, they made a big play on that with the sort of, uh, you know, we keep making arguments about conveyance. How is it conveying that you can do things? Um, that's one of the design choices that they've made for Windows 8 to indicate that there is more stuff you can do. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. I just I mean, uh, But you need to explain it because otherwise it just looks like you got a gap. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like to me. You, you, you always have a gap because the more apps you add, it just, we just keep tiling right. on. And well, Instagram is on Windows Phone, and if you want to check out, you mean, you mean six tag? You should still be using six tag because six yeah, tag is you, better. And we, I did a comparison yeah. video if you want, between if you six want, tag and Instagram. If you Instagram. want a solid comparison, check out some gadget guy's comparison of Instagram six tag, as well as the Android version of Instagram, <laughs> because Instagram it has a long way to go, long way to go. <laughs> compared to yeah. a third party app. What what they Rudy put that did? beta tag on there for a reason. This I, <laughs> they should have put alpha on there. That's how far they have to go. <laughs> it's amazing to me what Rudy as one developer has been able to do for these services. Yeah, I know. Where this one guy has made a better experience for Instagram than in, an army of On Instagram all of them, developers. yeah. And it's not just, the thing that gets me, it's not just Instagram. It's his Vine, his, uh, six, uh, the Vine app is better. Uh, yep. The Snapchat app, well, they, I haven't seen Snapchat on Windows, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be better too. Yeah. It's just like, he knows the platform, he knows what it's doing. Uh, the Instagram app, Phil just like they hired some guy off the street and said, yeah. "Come in once a week and work on this, and we'll pay you by the hour." It doesn't feel like an app from a product that has 150 million. It people. sucks. <laughs> yeah, and there but, is one. And, and it's moment. shocking. It's shocking to me that one of these companies hasn't gone to Rudy and just dropped a bucket of money in his lap and buy said, his app out for the that's, double. That's God, what I buy the damn app out. Look at what's been happening. Look at what Twitter did with a lot of the uh, other uh, app developers yeah, but, out there. They're basically, you're gonna close them out. <laughs> you know, right, close out Rudy. You could just buy his app off of him. Yeah, you can buy the app. Yeah, take away the no. competition. Six Tag officially becomes the Instagram app, and we just yeah. gave him a bucket I mean, of money. Don't, and they don't, can don't be. It true. It's easy. Don't, that be, way. don't be Twitter with a bunch of issues with their own personal life. Hey, how many revisions of their own app came out before it actually became decent compared to the because other apps that were out there? Because they had right to there? steal all the they had to steal all the good ideas from the app from the apps that were already out there and then yeah. close them down so they Twitter, could basically Twitter integrate needs, in their own apps. <laughs> Twitter needs to get like Microsoft, grab that big giant sack of money and launch it. <laughs> like, how hard is that? Take the sack of money, throw it at them. They will take it. Trust me. Google does this all the time. Just take yeah, your money, I, throw I it at it, and then they'll go, we'll take it. They'll, we'll, they'll make up some VP of some nonsense, and then it's done. I mean, that, that probably was a wise idea because the app, like you said, the app is lacking. Tremendously. No, not lacking. It sucks. How well, do you put on... <laughs> <laughs> no, Bowman <laughs> puts his foot down. <laughs> Right. No, you gotta call a spade a spade. I'm sorry. It's Instagram. lacking. <laughs> How do you? You can't lack and suck at the same time. Nah. You just no, can't. Because it, it really bothers me. Like on on the Instagram, and I mentioned this in the video. It really it's bothers me that when you go to take a when you go to take a picture, and it just throws you into the default Windows phone camera app. Which is Fail. which is widescreen. You know, it's it uses the full the full yeah. image, as opposed to even having like a square camera experience, which we all have sort of come to accept on Instagram. It's I can't believe that even with a beta, 
that they put out that where after you take the picture, then you have to go in and crop before you can even get into your filters and, and your image correction and stuff like that. That drives me crazy. Just that as an extra step makes makes the Instagram app not worth using in my opinion. Well, but, but the Instagram app here allows you to go up to 3200 ISO, which you really can on any other app. So it's taking some of the camera aspects, right? Yeah, but uh, remember, they're going to compress the shit out of it. So by the time right. it gets shared, none of that matters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, I mean, going, it's, I'm it's, just going through the menu here. That's all. <laughs> but but that's just it. Is like it, it's the Instagram app isn't letting you do that. The Instagram <laughs> app is defaulting to the yeah. Windows Phone camera app. This isn't any benefit from Instagram. It's that they are so lazy. They have not coded their own camera interface for Windows Phone. Yeah, they should have labeled it Insta Import because that's essentially what you're doing. It, oh, that, yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's and all, it's all still, you're still doing. Still doesn't do video. And there's no video. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. They should just uh, hire the guy from Six Tag or just What's his, Rudy? How do you say his last name? It's H. It's like H U Y N. Rudy Hume. Something Hume? Like yes. That? Just just hire Rudy so he can make. Something. Don't even hire him. Just buy his app. <coughs> True. Just buy it out from under him. Give yeah. him a bucket of money and say, Hey, we're gonna take this and thank you very much. No, but they're gonna need to uh, hire him to keep the talent for him to keep developing it. But I remember Twitter did that the, with the, when they did their iPhone app. I think that, yeah, because I remember the slide to refresh and like a lot of the stuff that oh, Twitter introduced right. was made by that guy. Like yeah. he already had an existing app and they just bought him out. Well, oh, and, that's, and that's another excellent oh, point the too. Stack because, of money at it. Because I, I, I mentioned just this in do the it. video also is I, I love the fact that you've got slide to refresh on six tag, but you don't have it on Android or iOS. You still have to push the little refresh button. Mm -hmm when you're going through. I mean, it's like those little touches where he's actually made a better app than the nice apps on other platforms, for instance. And you can There's see no shame app photos, too. There is no shame in the buying app game. There's yeah. no shame in it. Just admit your failures, go buy this guy out, put him, <laughs> put him on a pedestal, let him get his little 15 minutes of fame and be done with it. You create, um, you, you create a career for this guy all of a sudden just by throwing a few million dollars at him for his app. Like yep. you can't yeah, afford yeah. that. It probably now, wouldn't even take him three million dollars. You could probably, no, probably buy him off for like three hundred thousand or something. They or could probably less. just offer him a job. <laughs> just offer him a like, job. He'll take it. A lot of the for an independent app developer, this is what they want to do. Half the time they're working a day job and then they're making their app at nighttime. And the app is what they could that what they wish they could work on during the day. So if you go to them, write them a six figure check and say, sign this contract that you'll agree to work for us for two years, guaranteed. So on top of the money he gets, he gets the salary. He can Stock do that options. easily. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, you get right. to retain that base. You get to retain that know-how for two years. Yeah. yeah. Exclusive rights yeah. to it. That's actually yeah. a pretty yeah. smart yeah. idea. That's Again, we have come and up with more smart ideas. He's not your competition for two years, which yeah, is, is really true. worth them throwing the money at him anyway. I I, I, I'm waiting to see what he does for his next update. Since you know Instagram has hit, he's probably going through a few things out there, yeah. and we're going to go, "Wow, I didn't really realize you could do this on here too." So, I wish somebody right. would make a you know. Facebook app. <laughs> That's a whole long story. Just anyway, um. Uh, Raymond Ang Anglada had a, a question. I would love the 1520 for my mom, but I will not use AT&T. So in my very interest, oh, so I'm very question. interested in the 1320. Will the 1320 come to U.S. carriers? I hope so. I think there's a market for mid-range gear like that. I, I really think that we're starting to have conversations with people in the United States about improving entry-level and mid-range phones, and I think the 1320 could be really compelling when it's priced against phones like the Gal uh, the Nexus. Uh, I, I just don't know who bites on that. I, I could see T-Mobile maybe early next year picking it up. Yeah, as an I've too. heard rumors that T-Mobile might be bringing that um, you know, into the market. Definitely. But um, un, no, no word on whether it's coming to the U.S. or not. And it not, seems like a yeah, T-Mobile kind of phone, you know? Like, it just has yeah. that kind of vibe, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I hope they do they make a get play the, for They got to get the magenta theme. Carly's got to drive with it in a car. Yo. <laughs> and um, and it, 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 it's not official until it's got a magenta theme. Carly has it. And, and, <laughs> and, and I got to give them credit, so. though. I, I'm not thinking about it. They're the only real carrier that I remember with a, like a spokesperson now. Like they're really the rest of them don't have yeah, that yeah. anymore. Because you have Verizon yeah. had the the can the, you, can you hear me now, now guy. Yeah, yeah. Guy for the remember, longest time. And and remember Sprint, had, Sprint, Sprint had the cre creepy version the of the creeper, guy. The creeper in the trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never I never saw that one. <laughs> you ever seen the creeper? 
No, I haven't seen this. I'll see if I can pull up. This is like I don't think I don't think he even made it into the 2000s. I think it's like 98, 99. Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and he didn't last for very long because your nah. spokesperson's a creeper in a trench coat. Yeah, he really was. A, <laughs> this is back. This is this is before the yellow and black sprint. Yeah, um, but, before. Right. this is going way back. Yeah, this is red and white. Sprint. But of course, we can't forget the greatest commercial creeper of all time, the girl from the Palm Pre commercial. Oh, oh Willie oh, Pell, oh my God! Who Ooh, just looked like she was looking into your soul? She that girl. Not human. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that, Every time bad. that commercial came out, oh, I felt know like I was watching Resident Evil or something I, like that. I, I was wrong about that. They don't really give the guy a name, but the guy that does the AT&T commercials with the kids is funny. It's as clear. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <that's laughs> awesome. To the point where you see other stand-up comedians copying that style. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that's a pretty good one. I'll give that to um, Lewis Collier has a question. He goes, "If now this this would be interesting. If I wanted to get a Windows tablet, should I get the Surface Two or the twenty five twenty? Twenty five twenty. Wait until it's a seven. Oh, okay, 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 okay. No, 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 no. okay, okay. Wait, I wait, this. wait, wait. wait. If we're talking, said twenty five twenty. If that's we're it. talking Surface Two, not Surface Pro Two. No, not Pro. If we're talking mm-hmm. Surface Two versus yeah. the twenty five twenty. For the twenty five twenty, for fifty dollars more, you get a brighter screen. You get uh, LTE built in. You get um, a Nokia's collection of apps. Yeah. So the app collection on the 2520 is pretty formidable, including the new Dragon's Adventure, which I got to play with at DreamWorks. So that's really, really awesome. Pretty tiles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you get NFC. For $50 yeah. more, you get all that stuff on the 2520, whereas with the Surface 2, you know, you get the kickstand, which is pretty you cool, get and you get, you get uh, uh, I think you get a better collection of hardware, so like the blades that you get. I'm reviewing the music kit. It's behind me right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not to you say... Guys, that you got to make some tracks for us, man. Come on. got to make some music for us. That is uh, the one thing that the Surface does I'm have, trying. is that ability. Like, they seem like there's more accessories. That are, that's like the one Windows tab that's coming with like a ton of accessories. Well, and they've got a year head start for their accessories ecosystem. And I, I'm yeah. also going to be reviewing a company called Toast. They make these wood covers, they, they yeah. these adhesive covers. Yeah. And, and they have one for the Surface, you know? Oh, so nice. you, you, get, you get that kind of stuff. But I think in terms of actual hardware, the $50 difference between the two, I definitely lean uh, and 25 just- the overall look, if you're getting that for, if you're getting for yourself and you care about looks, the overall look of the 2520 is just yeah, leaps and bounds ahead yeah. of the. What about you, especially, yeah. especially you can pick up like a cyan. I really like that Nokia blue. I think you've never <laughs> seen a tablet that yeah. color before. Everyone thinks that you're you've got a case on an iPad or something yeah. like that. It's mm-hmm. it, there's there's like something to be said for geek chic, and I think Nokia does that much better yeah. than the more business corporate lines on the Surface. The Surface feels like. An old IBM. I'm not, gonna not in get Excel done like, today. Exactly. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I need to run my capital IQ. <laughs> How are what my about stocks? You, what about you, Andrew? What do you think? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. The 2520. Uh, I've used it briefly this week. I've been playing around for a couple of days, and I prefer that over the the Surface. If we're talking RT versus RT, and uh, I think Nokia announced that they're gonna be giving away the keyboard for free if you yeah. purchase one from them. So uh, that it's really takes bucks that you don't have to spend, right? Yeah, now. that takes away one of the advantages that the the service. Oh, they had are. Because, I, I, oh, I, I need the keyboard. Uh, so where's, yeah, exactly. where's, where's my keyboard, Nokia? The keyboard is for free if you buy it. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's something that Microsoft <laughs> should have done. We didn't buy it. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the point. Like, <laughs> I'm sure if you got the serial number off of that thing, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So go to somegadgetguy.com where I've posted the link to the order form for the free power keyboard, and you too can maybe score yourself a free hundred and fifty dollar. All right, we are going to uh, make, there let right me make now. a note of that on my Lumia 1520. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> would just drop the names, huh? And and I'll do something on my 1020 just to say names of phones. And I'll do something on my Surface 2 just because people are saying stuff. Oh, I got okay. my Surface 2 over here. I, I, I will try and defend the surface to you a little bit. Um, the first thing is, you said $50 more. That is um, if you are getting it through a carrier, right? Um, no wonder if you're selling this without a carrier. No, 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 no. The, 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 the price on the... On the twenty five twenty is four ninety nine. It's is, isn't it going to be no? But I mean, I'm saying there's, there's no place to actually buy it right now. It's no, it's, it's all carrier based. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. There's, there's yeah. the Wi Fi version. Verizon is the only place available, you can yeah. buy it in the US. Yeah, Verizon, Verizon, AT also. AT&T. AT&T was yeah, Verizon, AT and T. Right. So basically, you're getting something on contract, which 
if you don't want a contract, yeah, if you then, buy it outright, it is more expensive. Yeah, if, yeah, then you have to go to um, uh, the Surface. I do like the keyboard attachments. The the um, uh, what do you call it again? The not not touch cover. The what's the other keyboard? Not the touch one. The, the type, type cover. cover. Type cover. Yes, type yeah. cover keyboard is pretty cool. The kickstand also is just works very well, just because you can use it with or without the keyboard, and that's a huge plus um, on there. Oh, and, and, uh, and like I did a speaker test for the Surface, and having played with the uh, the 2520, the the actual speaker output, you can see like the speakers are, are right here on the side. The actual yeah. speaker output is very similar, but the 2520 has front firing speakers, so the speakers blast right in your face, as opposed to the Surface where it kind of tries to do like a like a an ambient sound, you know, like sound that just sort of mm -hmm. floats around you. And I kind of like, you know, it's just like on the HTC One. I like speakers that point right at you as opposed to speakers that bounce around first. So you so, like sound that blasts in your face. You know, I'm an audio guy, man. And like I, I gotta, I gotta, I used to go to concerts just to stand right in front of the subs, man. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. Wow. Right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. All going right, back yeah. to other things. <laughs> <laughs> I got quiet. Um, so that's that's it, Louis Collier. Uh, I, general consensus is, you know, uh, the 2520 packs more, and if you're willing to go with contract, yes. If you're not, then the Surface 2 is pretty much what you need to. And it's not to say that the Surface 2 isn't a very nice machine. No, yeah, I mean, true. It, that it, is it true. really is. It, it's it's that um, Nokia is coming in very aggressive, and it's sort of their last hurrah as a standalone company. So mm -hmm. there's a little excitement there too. Just that this is probably going to be one of the last. Uh, Nokia branded devices and it's, it's no actually nice. no there will be one set because the, even though the deal has been approved uh, by shareholders it still needs to go through regulation so we're thinking oh no no I'm not saying the last I'm just saying it's like one of the last last yeah. it's, we're it's sort of in the last that, push yeah, of it's what's unlikely in the pipeline. that Nokia is going to get through another product cycle as a independent company because right. they're likely to get approval mm, in they the are US. independent yeah Man, what was this yeah it's just well, well <laughs> name, name books, something like, that it uh, name something that they put out no, goes on the name of it officially like they're independent oh, so, like, all yeah, the Asher phones yeah <laughs> who Asher what Asher and uh, Asher Roth Asher sells a lot that's half of their revenue right there man yep. you can't joke around with it <laughs> uh, Asher Roth sells Nokia phones <laughs> Uh, all right, one more. Um, Thomas Senior says the Xbox looks pretty good, which now comes back to you, Warren, giving your thoughts on the Xbox One launch as well as uh, the console itself. What do you think? Uh, launch, I'm officially sick of day one updates of any console, period. It, it, it just... It, I, I, I always have that picture in my mind of opening up a console at Christmas, because I did do that, and you get your Super Nintendo and your Sega, and you would open it up, and you can just go and plug in your game, and you play right away. Mm -hmm. Now, kids, go, they take out, hey, my Xbox, I plug it in, and update. No. No, especially with Microsoft not allowing you to even download the update through, like, uh, like a USB, like Sony lets you do. So now you, now you have to go through, wait for the download, wait for the update, and then after already ask you a series of questions, then go through it again, and then watch it upsell you through Xbox Live, go through the whole damn setup, and then you finally get through to a, what is it, the little montage they play for two minutes, showing everything, which is good, they show you everything that it does, then you finally get into the game console itself. But um, as far as the Xbox, I, I, I do like it. Um, it it's, there's so much on it. <laughs> As far as like features and, and 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 things you can do on it, it's it, it's almost a little overwhelming, I think, for some for maybe the average person. But at the same time, it's 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 a good investment because it's gonna something that you're gonna get a lot of use of over, over time. That um, so far, I do like it. I like the the launch went well. It seems like um, I think they sold a million in a 24 hours or something like that. Yes, although it was in more countries than the PS4, though. Yes, and then it was well. You know, Microsoft does a good job of, of, of getting, doing worldwide launches and making it the most epic event. Like it, 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 it like, 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 like a, like a presidential election is happening or something. Like somebody, like an inauguration is happening <laughs> when an Xbox console gets launched. So they do a very good job of getting everybody excited about it. So I'm not surprised that it, that they did, you know, a million as fast as they, as they did. But so far, it's um, I've liked it. I just I don't like day one updates. They just frustrate me. <laughs> it's just I want to 
pick up the console and just play. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about that. Um, I mean, you I'm know, the, to me, the day one obvious one. I guess I'm just used to it. It wasn't too bad. Like to me, it, it kind of felt like it went quick. But I see what you mean there because even like I, I said earlier, when I downloaded Killer Instinct, I still even had an update for a game that I downloaded. So yeah, I that, found the, that very weird. When I tried, to, I, I mean, actually, rather, yeah. rather that was quick, but it was still. You know. Actually, in my um, which my unboxing setup of first impression videos, I got to finish editing to upload. But the uh, in the middle of that, I actually tried to play 2K. I'm like, oh, I'll just pop the disc in. Here's a one gig update, and then we got installed. <laughs> Enjoy just watching. <clears throat> like I didn't like half of it. They they did this montage, so I thought I was going into the game. No, it's just this little load screen, and it's telling you to install, and it's just distracting you with shiny things while this little install thing is going at the bottom. And I'm just like. I want the game. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 def I definitely hear you. But the other thing you mentioned about it being slightly overwhelming, I think, I think to a certain degree, Connect and Xbox voice recognition really takes a lot of that away, giving users the ability to just call out whatever they are looking for. Here was, here's something I didn't like about that. I had a Connect before. I got used to using the hand gestures to move things around. And I kept waving you at my did? Xbox. I, I, I didn't even touch that. I touched I, that. No, I literally I kept waving at my Xbox. I I used it on a 360. I kept waving at it. Oh, let me navigate through this way because that's what I wanted to do. And it's a much better interface to do that now. And it didn't do it. And I was like, all right, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, but, you have to um, say you have to say Xbox, and then you. Yeah, no, I know. I, 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 yeah. Xbox, but like I couldn't like. It was like all right. Oh well, but um. Okay. Go, like I said, um, Xbox, good launch, good titles. Just wish, you know, I, I want to buy, pick up my five hundred dollar console and just not have to update. Today. Well, and I think that also goes to some of the discussion that we have with developers too. Like, I would just like to be able to buy a game and have that game finished <laughs> to some degree. Like, they've got like the development process has gotten so so big and so huge that oh. like we're constantly tweaking these things long after we've actually purchased. Well, them. that that's been going on for a while. Cause e even oh, back yeah. in but that, even getting, back there in the original bigger. Nintendo and, and Super Nintendo days, remember that like Street Fighter was notorious for this when they would always come out with a different ver like different version of Street Fighter, it was just blatant updates. <laughs> that they, right. they, they, they just kind of repackaged to try to sell to you again for the same price as sold you the original game. Yes, yeah, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, Street that's Fighter, Street like, Fighter, Street Fighter, Fighter 2 Mega Alpha Make You a Sandwich in the Morning version. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mark 2. But, but that's also like, that. that's kind of like what DLC became when we could start yeah. downloading stuff. It wasn't, it, it wasn't always that like... You know, they were fixing bugs in Street Fighter, so they had to make you buy a new cartridge. Well, you know, that would have been a product recall. The game was still... The idea was that the game was still finished, finished but then yeah, when they right. wanted to add new characters, they'd, they'd come out with a new game for you to buy the new characters. Exactly. And, and Whereas now, now it's... it's oh. Go oh no! Go ahead, Sammy. I think you're going to say exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, no, I'm like, exactly. N n now it's you. You want the next extra level? Pay another. 20 bucks. Oh, and guess what? You can buy the awesomest weapon ever. Pay another 5 bucks. Microtransa microtransactions and, and updates, it's, just, it's killing gaming. Uh, seriously, I, there's like an actual discussion on this online right now where people are saying gaming today is dying because game developers aren't developing games. They're basically de developing um, microtransaction markets. That's exactly yeah. what a lot of games are. Yeah, you got to remember these guys have big budgets now. They have stockholders to answer to and everything is all about not just putting out the initial product, but how much they can make off of that initial product when it's sold. Because I, th I think a lot of people, when they think of these games, they don't think of it as, you know, a, a game and it's this and you sell it and but, it's pretty much all you get with it. They think of it as like a physical product and all the DLC is just basically the accessories that come around it to add more, to, add, to get more revenue generated out of it. They think of it as something as a physical thing. I Almost. get what you're saying, but these games, yes, they're spending, the budgets are getting bigger, but look how much they're selling on a daily basis. We now have 24-hour records being set by these games. They're making their money back. All oh, they yeah, want to do is they want to keep gouging their consumers, which is, which is really ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, well, well it's getting well, to I'm, a point where it's actually ridiculous right now. I, I've, I've argued this before, and I think you know, um, uh, Thundery has heard me say this before, and I've said gamers don't know how to speak with their wallet. They yep. do not. They yeah. don't understand. And I'm, uh, this is the analogy I always put up. They will buy the same five first-person shooter games throughout the year, 
and that that one's a marine in in, in in the 1960s. Another's a space marine. Another one's a marine in a little bit of modern warfare. Another oh, no, marine but they're, but they're is an alien because plant. One one uses a rifle and the other uses a plasma rifle. That's totally yeah, different. yeah that's totally so, different. Man. All for sixty <laughs> bucks. Remember, these games all drop at sixty. They'll buy all these yeah. games and they'll buy more than one because they have friends that play one and friends that play another, yeah. and they'll buy all these games. Ask them to buy an Xbox Live Gold subscription for a year, at sixty bucks, and and the ambulance starts so hard about just that. Oh, I'm if you like, could have said that fifteen seconds ago when the actual ambulance was in the background of you, that would have been. So <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> oh, you missed it. I know. We already got one ambulance earlier today. So. <laughs> nah. Keep that it, it, it's, right? it's just like the, they they can't do math and understand that you're getting gouged over here. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're the planning I... about having to play a game online, but yet Xbox and Microsoft make sure the game plays smooth. Every the server stays up pretty much forever, yeah. depending on what game it is. Your yeah, information safe, and it probably the best the best online console experience you're gonna get next to a PC. And but they don't want to pay for that, but they will pay to be in Modern Warfare to get a gun that has one extra attachment on it. And is a little bit shinier, and has some weird airplane scene or something stupid in it that they decide that they decide to run a gimmick. You know, right. just weird air- airplane scenes are amazing. If I'm just gonna put it that way. Like, I'm just happen. saying, just like uh, <laughs> I, I have no respect for those games comparative to like, like I don't play this game. I don't really play this game a lot, but I respect Grand Theft Auto far more yep. than I respect anything of Call of Duty, Battlefield, and. Did they still make Medal of Honor? No. No. <clears throat> um, they, no. All, you know, all those games, and even Halo, all those games. Like, I just don't yeah. respect for those and it's games. It's like not just the shooting games, because I used to play NCAA football a lot, yep. and mm-hmm. then I'd play it, and every year I'd say to myself, this is the same game, game but with new year. names, and they move the sliders a little bit, so now the cornerbacks are a little smarter. Now the court, the uh, the wide receivers run their routes a little bit better, and I just stopped buying it because it's the same game every let, year. Let me break this down. This is how stupid EA is. This is how stupid they are. Imagine if you sold a Madden subscription and just sold people roster updates and changes and new players. How much more money they would make versus having to process a no, new I, disc and a new I game long, every I think single we're long year? Overdue a sports uh, MMORPG. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, essentially, that's what Definitely. it would be. And essentially, that's what it would be. And yeah. they and no, you, I'm know totally many, you know how many Madden fans would love that? You could pay, I don't know, t- you, you can get it for ten dollars a month, and they'll do it. Yep. They'll 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 pay it down and do it because some people make money off of the Madden tournaments and stuff like that. It'd be more than worth it for them. Instead to do of it. sixty bucks a year, all of those people would be paying out sixty bucks up front, and yeah. then a hundred and twenty dollars a year. Yeah. And that and now you have residual income that's consistently coming in, and it just makes far more sense, but EA's got a lot more things to worry about, and that's called 2K not kicking their ass in every single type of sports <laughs> franchise possible. They're so lucky that that Madden thing is locked down, because <laughs> if they lost Madden, all they have left is FIFA. And and and, and then and I remember back in the day, I, I I didn't play soccer mode, but wasn't winning eleven a better game than FIFA? Uh, back then? Oh heck Pro, yeah. Pro oh, Evolution yeah. Soccer. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which, Which is winning, winning eleven here? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. Same, who made, who made winning eleven? Who made winning eleven? Uh, um, Konami. Konami. Yeah. yeah uh, that game was. Is there any way two K can make that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but the problem with them is like uh, EA oh. had the licensing, so Konami would have like Messi, but his name would be like Lionel. Mosley or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, so like the they read it a little issues like that. I mean, it just it, 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 the problem. That's another thing I have a problem with is is the licensing the, these these games. Exactly, my, oh, someone just brought this up. I think uh, Raymond uh, and the exactly my problem in MLB games. I was just about to bring up the fact that at least with the baseball games, there's competition in there. With like, um, I think Sony comes out with MLB the Show. And I think uh, then you have 2K Baseball, which is regarded as the best game, but at least there's some competition there to keep two of them continuing to put out updates, yeah. you know, and put out good games. Unlike uh, I think I think EA killed Triple Play at this point. It was a joke of, of a baseball game to begin with, but um, you know, unlike the and NBA, Madden, and, and, and Madden, well, the NBA. I don't even know why they come up with NBA Live anymore. They like they skipped a whole year. They came out with a new game, and they. Still got they got crapped on worse. 
<laughs> How do you skip a year having two years to develop a game and get beat down worse than you did the first time and you didn't even put out the game? Somebody needs to be fired. Uh, quick, <laughs> quick question here from uh, Raymond Angelada. Uh, I'm using HP Chromebook 2012. Don't say anything, Warren. And and it's all I need. Should I buy a Chrome Pixel or wait till the next Pixel comes out? I can tell you guys are not Chromebook fans, so no. be nice. Uh, <laughs> buy a useful computer. Step in as you know what? Who uses a Chromebook only only a allow Andrew to answer this because the rest of us will not have anything positive to yeah, say. Yeah, I can say <laughs> I, I use the Chromebook a lot. Uh, I have the Pixel, and I can say do not it's buy the this. Time to get a drink because <laughs> the amount of money that you spend on this, you could just get a very solid laptop. And it would essentially be the same thing because yeah no if you if you're gonna spend that money get yourself a Yoga Two Pro yeah Done. it's like you could spend less money like if I sold my Pixel right now I'd get less money than uh, than what it's worth but I can take that money and go buy a decent PC uh, laptop so I would oh, recommend yeah or a Surface and so, Two Pro and, and and I'll go <laughs> I'll go one further where if you if you get like a Yoga Two or a Surface Two Pro then go get the developer uh, build of Chrome that has the full Chrome OS built into it, and it's a better machine for cheaper than what you would get with the Pixel. Um, yeah. the, the, the thing that I always... And, and one of the reasons why us tech people get really cranky about questions like that is because the question is always prefaced with, well, I've got this thing that does everything that I could want it to do. Should I buy the better thing? I mean, you just told me... That yeah. the the Chromebook that you have is, is all you need. Mm -hmm. So why would you leave that? I mean, why would you throw more money at something else which doesn't really offer anything better? I mean, it has a nicer screen and it does offer better. If you, you if currently you want, have. if you want that screen and display, get yourself a Yoga Two Pro. Install sure. the developer edition of um of. Uh, but I but I'm just like and, and and not to get too cranky here and not not to pick on you too much here but it 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 is always funny to me where it's like oh yeah my Galaxy S2 does everything I need it to do should I buy the Galaxy S4 and like why yeah like I, I remember yesterday somebody or yesterday or Wednesday somebody had written to Android Central and asked them oh I have a G2 but I see that the Moto X is coming out now should I sell the G2 because I love it but uh, they're not going to get the updates as fast. I'm like, well, remember, updates come once every three months. You've got to use a phone every day. If the G2 is what's preferable to you, you already decided that it was better than the Moto X, nothing has Why? changed other than for the next three days, you're going to be watching people talk about Moto X having KitKat first. Right. Okay, so, so Andrew's... Use your G2. And uh, Raymond's retort here yeah, is, all I want is a Chromebook. I'm sick of viruses. Okay, um, I have to say this, though, Raymond. I haven't had a virus on my PC since. Uh, <clears throat> thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, I'd say five years, minimum. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, dude. I'm, I'm probably in the same boat. Yeah, and if, if he's so dedicated to getting uh, a Chromebook, uh, going to Best Buy, I forget which one it is. Uh, it's either the one... Uh, not the one by Acer, because that one's terrible. But there's one in there. Well, but HP one has been recalled too. Yeah, that one's. Uh, there's one in there that's pretty cheap. Or and if if it has to be a laptop, uh, maybe uh, I'm trying to remember the name. But if anything, you can uh, I'd advise against getting the Pixel because it's so much money. If he's that concerned about viruses, just change your habits. The websites you go to because I remember I installed. Don't, don't uh, click Windows on everything. Live security. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, I mean, the, yeah. the built-in Microsoft security has been doing me yeah. fine. On on Windows 7 and Windows 8 for years now. And then um, uh, I switched to the Mac in 2010, but it was the same thing. When I, whenever I was still using my uh, my old Toshiba laptop, I never had viruses. So just change your habits. Uh, Raymond also said, uh, he was just agreeing with you, Warren. He said, uh, that's my problem with MLB games. So he said, you know, he agrees. And uh, Mohammed Samir says hi. Hi. So, Sorry, hi. Says. Yes, yes, that's what he said. So hello, Mohammed. Hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely agree uh, uh, with the whole Chromebook on. question there. Uh, you know, I wanted to, to follow up on uh, Andrew's uh, sort of thing on the G2 and the Android updates and stuff like that. I, I, I just want to ask people, like, Seriously, why are you complaining about updates? Did you when a new update comes out, did your phone all of a sudden die? Is it dead? Is it broken? Are you losing features? 
Does it does have a little take, time bomb in it? Away? Did someone come to your house and take the camera out of your phone? You know, like, did someone come in there and steal all your jelly beans and now you want Kit Kats? Yeah. Like, like, like seriously, people in the rant of updates, like, when they came out Android 4.0, it, it, it should, it, now updates are just are incremental the way they should be, and there isn't just these leaps and bound jumps anymore. And I think that, and that's a good thing. You know, it isn't something like you you, you got to be begging for the latest and greatest update to get one thing that probably the developer of your phone will probably not even use. Well, and especially as Android's moving, Google's moving over into a more distributed platform where more and more of their services are standalone apps. So and, and that's, your, and, and that's your, the thing you yeah, really want in the end of the day. Your Google Play there's... service is getting updated. Your keyboard is getting updated. <coughs> even the text-to-speech uh, engine is now a separate update. So Thank you very much I, for that I, one. I, you know, I, I think uh, I think uh, the uh, the days of the huge feature um, operating system update are are, are dead. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, they're turn, they're, they're, they're they've sort of gotten in development a way. The way they're doing this is not as fast, but it's very similar to the way they they do the Chrome browser. Mm. Like find out what number of Chrome browser you're on. You probably have no idea. But the they thing just is, roll out the updates and it just comes and comes. But the but the incremental, but the experience stays the same. And they only literally let you know. Hey, we did this big thing, but it's after like maybe ten updates. But if, aren't they doing this as a way to sidestep this whole prior discussion we're having? Yeah, with carriers. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what they're doing, you know. And and I think that's a really good approach to it. Update the hell out of the apps, and that's it, you know. Yeah. yeah cause... Because that's the end of the day. That's what people want from Google. People want the apps and services from them. They yeah. could care less, really. Truth, they could care less what platform it's on. Yeah. They just want the services. I remember when when Gingerbread came out, everyone was clamoring for Gingerbread because you had to have that level to use certain things in uh in uh, what you call it in Gmail. You had to have that one yeah. to get certain features yeah. in YouTube. The way they're doing it now is where they well they've been doing it actually for like the past year and a half. They've uh, been yeah. decoupling Android from the apps, so everything is going to be in Google Play. So that's what you really need to be concerned about. If you're running a phone running 4.1, 4.2 or later. You have no worries. You're it's good, it's yeah. all a matter of like small things. And a lot of the stuff that's been added to KitKat is stuff that you were already getting from Samsung and yep. from LG. Great. So you, yep. you should be good in most cases. I think the, the main thing out of KitKat is the trim support. That's like the main thing. Speaking of KitKat, yeah, I just finished updating the uh, Moto X, and I swear mine to God, still, this, mine still doesn't get it. This There's no... Difference in I did update I did phone. update my Nexus uh, seven my 2012 Nexus seven Do I have any battery power left No of course not Charles. Oh you got an update for that <laughs> Yeah I got an update of like Oh here we go Finally I got the update for the Yeah it's out of power You right you about to say something um some gadget guy I was just gonna ask like uh, on the on the Moto X is that the Google Experience launcher or had you is that the same launcher that they had before? That's the same launcher. So I. I was well, curious, like on on a Moto, whether or not that was going to. No, like, no, the, no. The Google experience was going to take Nothing over. Nothing has that. changed. You, also, you know how you, you would slide to the left to get uh, what do you call that Google thing now. again? Google now. now. No. It's not. It's not available. Yeah. You still have to pull it up. That's not even okay, available Google. on the Nexus Four. Yeah, the Google is limiting that to. The Nexus 5 for right now. This is the it's the most unenthusiastic update I've ever experienced. Yeah, and that's the point. It's all behind the scenes stuff. Like yeah. it's improvements to the audio, but most of your devices, the the audio drivers are already tuned to do that themselves. 4.4 is mainly Google trying to standardize a lot of features, and Google playing catch up to what they saw the other manufacturers do. Doing, so yeah. going forward, it'll be easier for them to implement these things and make future updates faster. Right now, having 4.4 or 4.3, I can guarantee you're not going to notice the difference unless you look for it. Like, yeah, uh, for, oh, the next few days to the E, if you look at a change log of KitKat, yeah. and then you say, oh, I didn't know it could do that. And you're going to have to search for it to see that happen. Okay. Um, Raymond um, has a comment here. He says, I believe that virus protection software gives viruses after subscription is over. Hold up. Chromebooks are easy and fun, and I think it's the future. So yeah, it's the, a two-part two part statement here. He thinks the book is the future, and he's talking also about uh, uh, virus protection and giving you viruses after. So uh, I virus agree protection. that Chromebooks are the future, but we don't live in the future yet. And the, the problem is the products that are on the shelves right now don't match what you could get alternatives. 
See, I don't think Chrome Chromebooks are the future. I, I think Windows um, tablets are the future. Yeah. Because that has a more uh, convergent feel with a lot of more applications and a lot more devices, especially now that you know the push making that push for the Xbox, plus the fact that you have that unified ecosystem that you're trying to bring over. Chromebook runs on the cloud, so if your cloud is missing or you have no connection, then or it's a sunny day. You know. Well, and, and also I would just like to say this this notion of virus scanning protection subscriptions is dead with Microsoft's yeah right. protection software. Yeah. So I it's mean, not the only that I have a subscription; it, it's just built into Windows, and it yeah. does a it's literally you know, you, know, it. you know to be honest with you, the only um, the only reason that most of these virus protection companies even let's exist on the consumer level of things anymore. Is because they're pushed by the retailers, and they get mm -hmm. certain bonuses, and they get certain sort of uh, residual income um, from doing those things. That's why you see you go to a Best Buy or, or a, a Walmart or a, um, uh, what's another Fry's or electronic places. They're always pushing the antiviruses and things like that. It's because they get more revenue off of those things, but. Quite literally, if you just have MSE, Microsoft Security Essentials, you will be fine. It updates faster. Mm -hmm. It keeps the system safe. Um, every, and also, I, you still need to depend on your own on your yeah. own behavior to a degree. Yeah. I mean, you can get malware on a Mac, and I'm sure at some point, once once there's a tipping point for Chrome, where Chrome has enough of a user base to make it a, a viable target to people yeah, who make malware, exactly. there will be malware on Chromebooks too. I mean, it's not like we don't have problems getting crap in our browsers, and Chrome is a big browser. Hey, there's malware so, on Android also. Remember? Yeah. I mean, so so it's 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 really you know like after a point, you people can protect you so far. I mean, we can babysit you and we can hold your hand to a degree, and then it's still your responsibility to not do something which is going to cripple your computing platform. Yes. Stop that's clicking right. on everything. <laughs> that's very true. Uh, yeah. Matt Copeland, congratulations again for the headset you won. He says thanks. And, um, yeah, any more um, thoughts or um, comments you guys want to put out there before we wrap this up? Uh, well, I didn't ask you the topics of discussion, unfortunately. Oh, we'll, oh, we, it, it, Xbox One launch, uh, Moto X... KCAT, which we just talked about, and the Lumia 2520 and 1520. Yeah. Mm. X-Bone. <laughs> X-Bone. Yes. X-Bone. Oh, Lord. Sports so what's update. this thing about uh, one, Windows? Two, zero. Oh, sorry, sorry, what? No, just giving you guys an update. Arsenal ended up winning 2-0. Nice. Nice! So I mean, somebody asked somebody just... American. <laughs> go away. <laughs> <laughs> Means nothing to me. Who says something? How's the MLS like doing, guys? That's an awesome soccer league. <laughs> it's actually growing, surprisingly. It's still useless playoffs, it, it, especially in the on the West Coast. But anyway, somebody said something about Windows. Oh no, it was actually meant um, um, PS4. What's the what's this thing with PS4? People saying it has uh, issues right off the bat, like some people experiencing uh, defects with the PS4. Um, yeah, some of them are coming with uh, HDMI issues. Oh. Somewhere that the port basically dies, and they have to send it out to get it replaced. Uh, I think that's the main thing that I've heard. Some of oh, them yeah. are it's been bent, but other than that, it's only two things I've been I've heard. Ouch. Yeah, but Sony's been pretty quick with shipping people units back. Mm, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so the at least they've they've handled that. They actually squ squashed that pretty well. Uh, one of the issues with the HDMI ports were slightly bent, uh, so you could actually fix it yourself. Or the or I mean, they didn't mention that, but a couple of websites did, and Sony just says send it back, and we'll send you another one like pronto. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just it's just really interesting how I don't know. It's, it's, it, it looks as though the um, PS4 launch happened, and it got really good news for the first 48 hours, and then everybody was waiting for the Xbox One. <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, like, it goes back to what we were saying. Like I was saying before, with like Xbox makes it like a you know yeah, inauguration is happening. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, big time. You know, they 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 make. I remember when they lost the Xbox 360, and they had didn't they had the party in like a hangar or somewhere. They rented this giant like aircraft hangar and just like open it up, and there's this epic thing starts happening, and you got shiny lights and stuff like that. People like shiny lights flashing in their face. Okay. <laughs> It, it gets their attention. 
Okay. Sony had Sony had a couple of rooms and booths. It was like they they had like a CTI San Diego event. But it's not you even know. just that. It just I don't think there was that much excitement for even the lunch titles for PS4. No, 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 for, no, that's that's the thing. Except for thing. um Resistance, right? Except for no, Resistance, Killzone. Killzone. <sighs> oh, what am I saying? Resistance, yeah, Killzone, yeah. Except for Killzone, uh, what's it called now? Three or is it four? Shadow, uh, Shadowfall. Shadowfall. Yeah, See, but Shadowfall. That, but that's the problem with the with the PS4 launch and the uh, Xbox One launch because Sony said PS4 is all about the games. That's the slogan they kind of went with, right? But they right. didn't have games. Yeah, they don't have them. Uh, you know, and Microsoft was saying it's all. about... About the most, they do have games. So yeah, it's but, almost like they tell you, "Well, look." Because wait, wait, wait. wait well, here, well, here's the thing. It, it's almost like, um, it's it, it's Xbox. You know, it, the difference is PS4. You know, it does gaming. It doesn't have the games. Xbox. You know, it does more than gaming. That's sort of the advertiser. So I think there's more there's more excitement about something that's doing more than one thing versus something else that's really no, being but, perceived as only doing one thing. It is it it, it reminds me of the old. Um, Sega vs. Nintendo kind of commercials where, you know, Xbox does where PS4 doesn't, and, and, it, and that's, what it, that's what it just seems like. It's like... But even just on the gaming level alone, right, there's more buzz around Rise and Forza than there is about Killzone. Yes, that, that's and, the and thing. That, well, granted, 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 granted that, you know, Sony's not smart enough to drop uh, Gran Turismo as a launch title. Because if that I was dropping, know. we wouldn't hear anything about Forza. But, but, but no, no, we still right. They wouldn't even yeah. have dropped Forza. No, they wouldn't no, even no. no, I think they would. Based on nothing, what? Nothing. Gran Turismo, Turismo trumps Forza. I didn't even know that. The game I don't even like racing games. Forza most of, most of the time. That's the game they talk about a lot. Every Xbox One review mentions Forza as like an example of how good the, the system is. System, yeah. Yeah, because Forza was in, has been in development for the longest period of time of all their games. Yeah, that's oh, why yeah. they would still drop it because that's that's the team that has used the Xbox One the most. So you can see that's why it looks the best compared to, uh, to other games. So they, they definitely would. Um, but you're right there, Sam, where um, um, Sony didn't... You know, Sony talked about games and didn't show anything. It's, it's almost like how Nintendo even did it last year where, you know, like I said, if you launch a Nintendo console with Mario, it will sell. Yep, true. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it just did. So if you if but, you dropped one of your core titles and said, hey, you know, it's all about the games, and guess what? We have Gran Turismo at launch, we have this at launch, and we have that, or, you know, whatever I, it is. Personally, I think it's even, even before the launch of the game. Look at what uh, Microsoft did with Rise. Look at, look, look at what Rise did. Like, you go to Machinima and you type in Rise, and there's like a mini series on Machinima going on right now for Rise, a live action series. I'm yeah. like, come on! I heard, it's, I heard it's that game didn't bugs. get great reviews. It, 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 did, it didn't get great reviews. Some people. I almost it, bought it. Some people call it a button smasher. It's it's mixed. It's one of those games where, when you, I think when you played, you would wait, most wait, people wait, wait. would probably like it in in a sense. And it reminded me of um, uh, one of the games last year from Ubisoft from Wii U, Zombie U. It got bad reviews until I played it, and I was like, "This game is great." Because the only reason most people hated it was because you only had one life. <laughs> you know, if you died, you died. Oh my God, the game difficulty. Exactly. Uh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll get to that. We should segue to that in a second. Yeah. But like, there's a question in the chat. Uh, Raymond dropped EA Sports Live 14. Is that I'm going to get it? I'm going to buy it now. I just don't like 2K. No, no. Go go Google a video. <laughs> no, Google a video. NBA 2K4 versus NBA Live, and look at and look and look at and look at the differences in those games. Then come back here and say that you're gonna go buy Live again. Okay, okay. This is this is a question that I'm gonna point towards uh, some gadget guy. <laughs> this is from Matt Copeland. He said John Rettinger had a terrible time trying to use his Connect. Of course he does because he doesn't know how to use technology. Ooh. Ow. Ow. Uh, I mean, we, uh, go, go watch his first Surface review and then go watch his second Surface review. Oh, I, after hey, John, I spent oh, hey, weeks yeah, trying friend. to figure out how to do things <laughs> with my hands because I can't figure out how screens work. Of course he did. Of course, of course he had a problem with an interface that m a million people are going to pick up and use just fine. Uh, it, it, he's got to find something because if he doesn't, then he doesn't get flame traffic, and if he doesn't get flame traffic, then his site doesn't pull in the same kind of metrics, and he's not as valuable to advertisers, and his you know his ROA and his site goes down. So of course he's got to find something. 
I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, I, I am not a fan of the Xbox One, <laughs> and I promise you I will not have a problem when I pick up the Kinect, because I'll probably read the instruction manual before I pick oh, it up. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, 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 read the instruction wow. manuals? What are we, communists? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but to... to to, to answer Matt Copeland, uh, I, we have, well, at least myself and Warren have set up the Xbox One. I can tell you this. If you're using the Xbox One voice commands on Connect, okay, if, you, if you enunciate properly and you just speak up louder, it really will, you know, it picks it up pretty well. Very well. I mean, my roommate comes and he goes, Xbox on! And he goes, oh, it really is, it almost is that fast. If I go Xbox on, it's a, you know, it kind of thinks because it feels like you're talking to it passive. So talk to it like a, you're talking to a, a dog that's been bad or something. <laughs> and you, you will get their appropriate response. But, bad Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Bad well, and it's, and it's, like, it's, it's like what we also saw from when uh, Google started moving Google Now and voice uh, search to other platforms, that there's probably also a cadence that the Xbox is listening for. Yeah. Or if you kind of go Xbox on, it's not gonna understand that structure. You know, it's kind of sure, like yeah. when you say, "Okay, Google," you can you can sometimes trigger that by saying things like "Magna Doodle." You know, like you know, it, it's it's not listening just for the words; it's it's listening for a certain imperative. Well, the, the only, I didn't really have an issue with the connect. Don't don't the only problem I think I had with it was uh, not to interrupt you. Sorry, I was just had to man. The only problem I had with it was like. I didn't know the command as well as I thought. I I, I remembered what they were. It was a little <laughs> bit different. But and, and, and like you'll see it in the video. But like I got I had gotten used to just doing that, this, waving my hands and going like this to it. And when I couldn't do that instantly, it just it, it was like ah oh, you know what's going on here. But that's oh, obviously no, if that... no no. But Warren John Redinger John, John Redinger had problems with it, so it's probably no unusable. no the, the, no the, no. <laughs> I don't think you can use it. I think I think Connect's fundamentally broken until is this? <laughs> until next year when he he tries it again and it's surprisingly elegant, just like Windows 8. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is. Yeah. Andrew's all quiet. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying not to laugh. Yeah, I'm just happened. looking at him. I'm looking at Andrew. No, yeah, He's just trying to stay yeah, neutral. No. <laughs> I, I always try to stay no. neutral. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. He's trying to stay neutral. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but the thing is, you do an unboxing, and, and was his a if, review? Was his a review, or was it an unboxing? I, yeah, to be fair, it was probably an unboxing. I, if it I was, if, like, yeah, if, but even still, no, no, unboxing. But no, but still, but no, but that's fine for me. Unboxing set up a first impressions. Those things should be happening in the video because you, this, you, this you're figuring your, it out. Yeah, experience and you're figuring it out. That you once you figured it out, that's the review part of the whole thing. So right, but, I, but that's what bothers me is that we never really seem to get to the proper review. Until there's some notion of getting like the next generation product, you know, yeah. we didn't get a proper Surface review from Techno Buffalo until the Surface Two was coming out. You know, that's that to me is irresponsible, and you're starting to call unboxings reviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's, been, to going call on. First that's been going on reviews. for years. No, 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 no I know no, that's but... started happening in like the past year and a half because people figured out that with SEO. People don't search for hands-on or nope. unboxing as much nope. as they search for reviews. First impressions. So why would I I've want seen that? people like the day the ACC uh, uh, one was announced. I've seen people post their hands-on video and it'll say ACC one review because if you're first to Google months ahead of everybody else saying review, you're going to be uh, at the top of Google searches for like the next year, and that's yeah. why people do that until they gain until Google until like the actual it. reviews come out. So you get all that free search traffic just because mm-hmm. you change. From unboxing to review. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Matt Copeland, uh, there's nothing wrong with the Xbox One uh, voice commands. <laughs> it's, it's like... To answer uh, your question. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the Xbox. The Kinect is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Read the instruction manual oh, and also man. enunciate... Well, she was R- RTFA, and you'll be ahead oh, of a, a lot this, of tech bloggers. Wait a minute. He has, is this the Xbox One Connect hands-on? Are you watching it right now? No, I'm not watching it, but my, my problem is with the title. How the hell you have a hands-on with a device that you don't use hands for? hey <laughs> No, can no, you, no, can no, you, no. Can no, you watch no, the video no. to, and skip through and see and see where his, no. his issue is? No, he's, okay, so he has Xbox One unboxing. Okay, no, I was just checking to see if it was, if it was a review. Because <laughs> if it was a review, would he say that? Come on, John. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. But um, I, I, no, I understand um, uh, uh, what Juan's saying uh, there with the whole 
just people basically going back on what they said <laughs> their, their reviews are not properly reviewing products and it does become a very annoying thing you know seem everyone's dropping just for the hits and views but I'm, I'm, I, I am I am fully convinced of this you have to put all quality in and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a thing of uh, people people entrust in you if, if they feel your word is gold if they feel like your opinion is value then they'll keep coming into you I keep saying this over again look at MKBHD Yep. He does. He puts out one video of high. He's so consistent with his high quality. It's to the point where people wait for him before they go buy a product. They wait to see what he has yeah. to say. And once you've reached that level, there's no website or anything that's gonna top that. Yeah. Like there's no there's no jumping the gun and trying mm -hmm. to put something on early before that. Chris Prillo is a very good person at doing this as well too. Mm -hmm. Of putting out. Uh, Quality, opinionated, and, and and people buying into his word. Once people are bought into believing in what you say or believing in what you're doing, it it it's it, 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 it you're, you're golden at that point. But when you start to do the SEO game, you start to try to jump the gun on things and do stuff like that. People read and see through that eventually. They eventually yeah, see that really the quality cynical. isn't there, yeah. and and they, and they start to doubt you, doubt your word, and 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 it, and it becomes a and, and I guess that's a, it'll end up being an issue for you at some point. Um, and Raymond has something a question. Yeah, yeah. Ray, Raymond's question. I was, was mentioning just on LG's uh, G Flex video. G Flex. He, that was a very good video when he showed that, like how it actually bent. Have, have you have you guys seen the video? Yeah, I've seen yeah, it. It actually yeah, bent in cool. full fields. It's pretty cool. And uh, that was what, I remember when the G Flex and round conversation we had a couple weeks ago. That yeah. was one of the things that interested me. It's like uh, the shape itself. You, you don't really see a purpose to it. But when you see the kind of things, like it's more forgiving to drops, uh, scratches, and stuff like that, stuff like that, yeah. that kind of technology is pretty cool. So I can see this being like an experiment for them. They say, all right, this worked in this phone. Let's see how we can put it in a mass market device. So, yeah, right. and that how makes can we devices... put it in a laptop? How can we put it in a, on a, yeah. you know, a tablet, on a camera? Yeah, it, but it makes your devices more durable, and I think that's oh. what consumers want at the end of the day. Is, you know, I'm buying a phone, you know, I, I drop it or something, you know, because of its give, it's just going to bounce off, and right. you know, and it scratches too, especially because you get, you know, any new, any new thing you get, whether it's from a car down to a cell phone, you know, you don't want to have that day one scratch. Just really pisses you. <laughs> Off. Right. You know, you're like, this is brand new. I just dropped, you know, X amount of money on it, and right. and then you know, this is this nice gash there. You're like, mm, get that off, get it off, and you, you know, you really can't. But with this, you you know, the the whole idea with the healing uh, back cover as well as the uh, the flexible display, really, actually flexible phone, really, because that means the battery is flexible to a certain degree, as yeah. well as the the board itself. So no, the the battery is not know. flexible. They it's just curved, and it's like in a yeah. specific part of the phone, phone that doesn't flex. Oh, it doesn't flex at all. Yeah, they're still okay. working on flexible batteries, but uh, this one is just like a curved battery, and they put it like right in the middle of the, the device, oh, the part that doesn't bend. I was gonna. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, uh, something we, a story we haven't talked about yet that we should talk about. Uh, I had to find it here on Gadget. First of all, on Gadget's new theme, you guys are a bunch of sellouts. And um, <laughs> go and see why and why and why did it, I, I saw it and I was like, I know why they're doing this. I'm waiting for it to show up and then boom, there it is, sellouts. Um, number uh, number two. <laughs> Motorola inked that deal with that modular phone. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, the 3D, uh, 3D, 3D, 3D. Yeah, yeah. The modular phone, right? Yeah. yeah. Project Aria. So yeah. The, 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 linked, the inked manufacturing uh, uh, manufacturing deal with, um, what's the company's name? Uh, 3D, 3D Systems. Systems. 3D Systems. Yeah, they're so, the ones that invented 3D printing as we know it today. Okay. So, so basically, it, it, it would seem that Motorola might have a prototype by the end of next year. So Google will have a prototype at the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what they say. No, but which no, I, I think I think Motorola Google wants to push that through Motorola because with that to give them something of an edge of, of a different kind. Yeah. Um, because well, they have to find something for them to, to make it legit that they were different. They were yeah, because Google will stick with just the Nexus devices, and we can already clearly see that some of the Nexus Five features don't show up on the you know Moto X. The whole you know. Google now just on on the left side panel this doesn't show up so definitely this is this is cool that at least that Marola is moving forward it not it's not just something that they announced 
and you know it was going to be well hopefully in the future we might see a, a demo or something you know but they're moving with this so this is pretty cool and hopefully we'll see something by by end of 2014 definitely hopefully so yeah i think we should because they were saying that they would seed stuff out to like developers within like months so we might oh, see some yeah we might see just like a prototype in early 2014 Depending uh, on how things go. Oh, that'd be cool. Google I/O maybe. Yeah. Probably before then. Yeah. It'd, it'd have been nice. Maybe if Mobile been, World Congress or something. We might see something. <laughs> it'd have been nice. Uh, this this would have been something nice and so cool if it was in time for CES, so we could see something other <laughs> than the 50th 4K 3D TV and the right. 50th smart march we're gonna see there. Although you know, yeah. I have to say for CES this year, I'm don't forget to iPhone cases. What services I would, we might see launch? I would CES. pay. I would pay to go to a con. No, no, say no. I should not say I would pay. I would support. <laughs> a solo case conference. You ain't come all out of there. Just cases. A whole conference for but just no cases. But no one would go. That yeah, exactly. No, 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 one no would you go. open it up to the public, and then every and then everyone will go. Um, you were, what were we saying? Um, one uh, something about uh, services. Oh no, I, I actually think because uh, what we're seeing with hardware, I, I don't know of any super exciting tablet or phone announcements that I'm really lit up for for CES. What I'm hoping is that we start to see the pendulum swing back. Now that all of our phones and tablets are so stupid powerful, that I'm hoping to see some cool services, software, apps, and development to actually start taking, you know, advantage of the mini supercomputers that we all walk around with now. Uh, yeah, true, true. I don't think we're going to see much of that CES, though. I think CES I'm, is I'm hoping. I, I mean, like, because even in years past, even if it's just, like, accessory services, you know, like, when, when people started launching a bunch of, like, RC helicopters and RC cars that you can control with your phone, like, two years ago. Like, yeah. if we can start seeing some of that stuff tie back in, uh, you know, give people a reason why they need to have a Qualcomm 800 quad-core you processor. You mean Qualcomm 805? 805. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you got to get that 4K screen on a yeah, device true. that doesn't make a difference. No, if, if no, Samsung's no. going to really wow us with a pixel pitch that I can't tell the difference on. I want, no, this is CES. We're going to see 200-inch TV. <laughs> That's true. Two, I mean, we'll see that too. But, yeah. and 300-inch TVs. No, no, it's by Samsung that swing on a little Actually, what I, want, what I want to see is build the it into your that we have literally. every year where... Samsung will announce something immediately. LG will announce something on the TV department, and then they'll announce something else. And Samsung's like, "Well, we already have it anyway." So, <laughs> you know, that's that's usually what happens at CES. Is yeah, you know, we go from one booth to another, and it's TV announcements of of the wise. Oh, it'll and, be AK. Press day is the same thing. It's like you literally spend the first half of the morning seeing the same product from every company, just with yeah. a different name or or a slightly different slightly branding. different hook. Yeah. Well, for, for, for me, what, what, what I'm really interested in is the same thing I was interested in last year when I went to see is, is still the 3D printing. I think that's definitely the future of technology as we know it right now. It gives, it puts so much power into the hands of uh, just the end users, into the hands of consumers, that it's really, really scary what we'll be it, able to it, do actually, on our own you know, in the near future. In 3D printing, as you mentioned, is not necessarily the printing itself. It's actually going away from using CAD software. I want, I, I, yeah, where yeah, the God. software aspect of it. Yeah, is, yeah, the, the, the handheld paper. scanners and stuff God, like that. Because CAD, you need yeah. to be a genius to be able to. No, do it. but I think <laughs> that the promise of 3D printing, especially now when you see these uh, handheld scanners and stuff of that nature. I actually saw a handheld scanner plugged into a, um, a Surface 2 um, at the last Pepcom event, and you know that was what we used to basically image. Uh, create the image, uh, the software image, and then you print it out. And this is all for less than two grand. Now, imagine basically being able to make your own, like, you know, replacement parts at home. Yeah. It, it really is going to affect renew uh, reusability, affect basically just, you know, odds and ends around the house, like stuff that we normally would spend a dollar to ten dollars around, like, going to 99 cents uh, shops and stuff. That might actually end. That's, oh, yeah, that's, and that's in our lifetime. And no, that's but pretty cool. That's the, actually pretty cool. The one thing about 3D printing we, we all seem to for, kind of forget is that, you know, the materials that 3D printers print are with are basically, they're not biodegradable. And if we get into that habit or that world where we start printing our shit at home, we're going to yeah. have a lot of crap. No, but a, lot a, fun, a lot of waste. A lot of waste. 
No, the plastic. No, no, I'm saying that, but we live in we live in a consumer America, uh, society called America, so it's going to happen. Let's no, no. But actually, the plastic is being used America. by this company called 3D Solutions. Mm -hmm. It's actually biodegradable. Yeah, but is that used by everyone? That's the thing. If it's, it's an industry not, standard, but, you know, but that's then... a, we can get to an industry standard where we use biodegradable materials. So it's um, it's actually the more I th the more you're exposed to 3D printing, the more the price drops on it. The yeah. more enthusiastic I am about it because it's just it's really is getting steps and steps closer to the replicator. You know, <laughs> it's, it's it really blows my mind. It really is blowing my mind. I'm like, we are living a life that's almost parallels what we saw on TV 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and people they are going to start printing our girlfriends. From now. Hey, hey, that's what I'm planning on, man. Replicate that girlfriend. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's... <laughs> man, this just got creepy. Wow, he, yeah. <laughs> The creep factor just went up. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, if you heard Sam talking about replicating a girlfriend, he meant printer one out from a 3D printer. No, oh no, no, no! I meant like Star, Star, um, Stargate replicators. I want, want to, I want a replicator girlfriend that would turn into a Cylon eventually. You're so hot. Long. Yes, as you're moving through all your sci-fi. Wow. <laughs> you're just mixing all of your metaphors. I was about to say, like, that's, you have two different shows in there, buddy. And, and, and she will be number seven of nine. <laughs> Let's just go with it. You just go okay. with the whole thing. I, I'd, I'd like the, the human Cylon with the red glowing spine option, oh, please. If yes. I could just get that, that I would, would be I would nice take that on. I'll take nine. I know that's only yeah, a, a premium nerds. model. That that one that has guys, a belief system at least you know you guys are some geeks. confidence there. All of you. So are you. Um, you so all are geeks. Before I mention, uh, before I, before we round up, uh, sorry, in the time mentioned, um, any any thoughts on the uselessness of the week? I know Warren has one, but is Ooh. there any any anything you want to throw in there? Because there really wasn't any for me this week. Uh, yeah, I was gonna talk about a little thing I heard about over in the blog space about some. Um, what's it called? I think plagiarism. It was called. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. mention any names, but if you Google it, you'll probably find it. There, there, there's like a blogger out there who literally copies and pastes stuff. Who was actually pretty like he was actually found out of copied and pasted a review from like one of his blog posts was a copy of stuff that was on Wikipedia word for word. Uh, who's the blogger? Uh, I'm not gonna say, but uh, <laughs> you but might as well just it. tell me. Google right. it, you Google it, you find it. We'll talk oh, about send it me right the link so I can mention and, the yeah, person's name. And, and 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 it's and it's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just goes out. to show, like the way we're talking about SEOs and stuff like that. It just goes to show that there are people out there who are just willing to just game the system and not put any actual content out there right. in order to you know in order, in, in order to make money. And that's um that's where we are, you know. And people, and you're wondering why you have Google. Trying to enforce Google Plus as part of SEO and a part of how people search and look up things, because well, they they got to get it. They, they, it. It's stuff like this that that this gaming the, the people when they're gaming a system like that. This is stuff like that that prevents it. Not true. Um, speaking of Google Plus, sorry to kind of go on a tangent there. That's my little mini pieces of the week because yeah, it's still kind of messing me up a bit. Because right, actually, it was about 20 minutes ago, um, Juan um, posted a comment on this Hangout video, and it said I needed to review a comment. And guess who it was? It was some gadget guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to review your comment, even yeah, though you are on Google mess. Plus and <laughs> on YouTube, which. Makes uh, no it's so sense. frustrating. Yeah. I, I want this to work well. I actually really like this idea, and yeah. there, there's still. I, and, I, I, and the, the, the thing is, I think a lot of us like the idea. I just wish they would didn't pooch it the way they did. Yeah. No, well, and, just, and now, now to start iterating faster on their their updates. I still have videos where, and you know, if anyone watches my videos and they try to leave comments that I can't approve their comments on. Like yeah, it's I'm just broken. It, I, the check box is right there, and I click it, and then nothing happens, and your comment's still in in limbo. And I'm very sorry about that. It's I'm very frustrated. Google plus limbo. That. Well, it's, it's, what Google has done to, 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 to YouTube is really silly. It really it is silly right now. It was supposed to be a, a, an amazing solution to commenting systems, and that just turned into Google's like greed to try to turn everyone onto Google Plus. I'm like, sorry, Google Plus is not really the greatest social network out there. You have a, an amazing social network called YouTube. Why fuck it up by trying to make it into plus? You know, just use the commenting system and leave everything else alone. 
No, I think that the problem is that YouTube far evolved outside of being a social network system. Like the social aspect of it was kind of not working for a while. Yeah. It, 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 that's why I've implemented this because YouTube evolved out of being a social network because it, it really wasn't that anymore. Yeah. Into... No, I, I don't think it evolved out. I think I think YouTube was was two things at the same time. A lot of people want to go to YouTube to just watch videos. They don't care about commenting. Mm-hmm. They don't care about even like socializing. And then there are people who also follow us that want to comment and socialize. And YouTube was a two-headed monster. It would it become that because when YouTube is also trying to push paid content and do all this TV stuff, right? People don't necessarily want to sit down there and comment and socialize. They already have all the social networks. They want to go there and say, "I want to watch the latest cat video. I want to watch that funny video that my coworker showed me uh, on his." phone or what's the name of the video again let me type it in that, I mean they don't want to have issues where okay fine I want to leave a comment because somebody asked give me instruction can I just leave a comment and see if I get a reply that's the problem there is that they, they took something that had two different had two paths running along and tried to make one path through Google Plus through because of business means yes they sat down there and they said yes we want to make Google Plus bigger and second they also were trying to improve the service but they just botched it because they were thinking more of improving hey, Google I Plus am, than I'll, YouTube I'll, itself. I will say this much for it though as far as being able to talk and communicate with people when it actually does work no, it, it works is very well, yeah. far better than the old comment system I'm so glad I don't see first all the time and, and 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 some insult or some other stupid thing that usually pops up in a video. Now what shows up is people actually leave legitimate comments for a change. Like they actually try to have a conversation or try to say something that's see, see, worthwhile. But here, here's where my problem would be, though, and, and I think I've started noticing some of that is that how will your subscriptions work necessarily because people can also follow you off Google Plus right. now if people are now just following you off Google Plus then you might not get as many subscribers as you would and that how would that affect your YouTube ranking and all, all that fun jazz that you get I, well I think I think as long as you have the page your plus page linked to your YouTube channel they yeah, know but, in the back end. No, but it's no, by the no, user no. account because no, when I user account, yeah, yeah when I log into YouTube it says do you want to use it as my email address or as your Google Plus, and I mistakenly click Google Plus, and when I do that, all my subscriptions are gone. Uh, when I go mm-hmm. back in as my email address, all the original subscriptions yep. I have are back. Oh, that's so a, if that's someone really logs cool. in one day and subscribes to you on like their email by mistake or something, or they forget that you're subscribed on their Google Plus account, that messes up the flow of it. So it's not like well, a, a that, unified structure. No, that 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 in theory would only happen is if you had a Google Plus page, like a business page, like like we do. If you don't have that and you have a no, Google Plus page linked to email, that's how it email. is for me now. Because the way it is now, where they're like every time I lo- I was I avoided for months, and now every time when I log in, they kept pestering me saying, "Hey, if you want to make comments, you need to link your YouTube account to a Google Plus account," and that's what I did. And because of that, every time I log into YouTube now, it asks me which of the two account, which of my two accounts do I want to log in. Your Google Plus or your email address? Yeah, you know, see, that's well, the thing. The thing it's, is, it's, a, it's a weird I setup. I didn't lose any subscriptions when I. No, no I'm, not, I'm not saying about losing subscriptions. Though. I don't understand what Andrew's talking about because for me, it does the same thing. It says, do I want to log in as board at work at gmail.com, which is the board work yeah, email, or as borderwork.com? Now, when I did it, it transferred all my subscriptions over to borderwork.com. But in in your case, it seems like it's not necessarily that way. Plus, well, the and, other fact and for for a lot of people when that when that setup happened, when I first went through it, it created a whole new Google Plus account which wasn't tied to any information on my YouTube. I mean, it was a complete vacuum, and so that's what ended up happening where I have to populate information from YouTube into this new Google Plus account, which then became the default uh, YouTube account. To, to interact with, and so I think that's where a lot of people are running into. Like, there's like, oh, all my videos disappeared. They didn't. It's just that it's Google that didn't account. pull the information, and it didn't mm-hmm. work like they said it would yeah. mm-hmm. in populating the information on this new account. And there was no direct setting. Every time that you would try and manage that transition, Google would ask, "Oh, and do you want to import your Google Plus information?" Like, there is no Google Plus information. This is a new Google Plus profile. Okay. Pull the information from YouTube. Give me the other direction sync. I've already populated all of this information on YouTube. 
And uh, I think that's still where a lot of people right. are running into problems. But, but I also think the other thing too is that, like I said, is if you're if you're using Google Plus now as, as they want you to do use as the commenting system and also where people can follow you and things like that, is that how is that going to affect? Because in YouTube, we know the way YouTube works. The more subscribers you get, the Google pushes you up on a ranking system. So basically, your videos get viewed better. You also have uh, d different things that. Uh, help your videos move forward. So if people just stop subscribing and say, well, he's on Google Plus anyway, and I just, I'm following him on Google Plus, I will see that video no matter what. Right. Then how does that affect you as a YouTuber in either, either generating revenue and also getting better views? Because well, they, they have, well, have, I don't so think they have to have something, out. they have to have something in the back end that's, that they, that they're running an algorithm that's answering that. I, they, have well, to. They, they, they probably have to, but I don't think it's working properly just because everything else is not working properly. Anyway. Well, to tell you the truth, since this Google Plus integration, I've saw, I've saw views and counts rise. I've seen things rise more since they've done this than before. Are you sure it's not your specific content getting shared more often? Exactly. Or yeah. That, no, you can I'm be... seeing comments on older videos that were not getting comments before. Oh, okay. I'm, thinking, no, that's oh, cool. I'm seeing stuff from, from past that's pulling up. And it's no, starting see, to move up. Now, see, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing I'm seeing content rise, but I also looked at it as well, I'm, I'm entering the holiday period where I, there's so many things I am putting out too, where a lot of people are just commenting in general. You know, for me, it's, I'm looking at it as, as a as a general push, and you know, uh, I'm getting more comments from people on Google Plus just because I never got it before. So I don't really look at it as. Being, well, if you don't see the thing is is that. I don't think the, the comment's not going to Google+. Plus. It, 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 the no, no, no. Is, I mean, what I mean by Google+, Plus, it, I mean, it's showing up in a notification that looks like it's Google+. Plus. When you click on it, it jumps to YouTube. It's weird. No, what I mean by Google+, Plus, I mean people who were on Google+, Plus as their main social network, are now commenting on yeah, my mm. stuff. But, I mean, but they pull, but, but, any, but if they comment on that video, that, that comment gets pulled into YouTube. Not necessarily. It's still, no, it does. I mean, yeah, some of them do. Some of them you can't reply, and some of them I don't know. Well, where they I, come it's from. a weird thing because if you, no, no. Here's, here's the weird thing. If you, I know why that happens. If you link to Google Plus page like we have, like your website's a page. Yeah. There's different rules. You can't really comment on things or do things to a person's page unless they circle you on Google Plus. So I think that's why the commenting isn't working because if they don't follow you on Google Plus. You can't respond to anything. Oh, so now they need to follow you on two networks. Oh, oh, perfect. For you two oh, to get perfect solution. Right. Yeah. I understand why they did it because Facebook did it the other way around and pages could just randomly Facebook could just randomly follow people and kind of spam them to death. Well, they kind of did it the other way around, where they was like, nah, they they gotta circle you. Then we'll then we'll allow you to talk to them at that point. Kind yeah, of. That's kind we, of the way they did it. We just it's it's backwards. Well, I think there's there's another major if, issue if, if, that most if, if, people if, haven't faced yet in uh, with this whole Google integration is just the fact that people who use multiple accounts, like yourselves and myself on mm -hmm. Google Plus, woo, yeah, it's gonna cause an issue real soon. Yeah, have you bad. noticed? Have you noticed right now that if you try to check your G, let's say you have two Gmail accounts, right, uh, and you want to check the Gmail for another um, for another account, you literally have to log out. Yeah, it's right. so your yeah. But the default, the default on this is basically automatically sign me in. And even if you unclick that, right, the next time you sign in, it's automatically checked again. So I can yeah. just imagine people posting I'm things from their personal sites that they just don't want to post. You know? No, I've, I've yeah. been able to. I've been able to switch it to my accounts fine. And like, like I like the, the one thing that I did do is like. I have one Google Plus account with that email address that's linked to that, and any other Gmail account that I have is not linked in any way to a Google Plus account. Yeah, I don't have. I have one too, but even I still have the same problem where it will kick me out of my because my border work is the main email I use for you know border work videos. But my other Gmail accounts and even uh, the border work website account, which is powered by Google Apps, also I get kicked out of that like randomly, and it would now kick yep. me out of border work for mm -hmm. YouTube, mm -hmm. and I have to resign in. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, but you know that was hap I found that happening before the the integration. Now I know I'm what you're talking about. It, it that is, was happening part before. of the integration because they're trying to incorporate Google Plus. It's, it's no, I'm talking about problem. like before they even mentioned it, they were going to change the comments. I remember this happening to me months, months back. 
it's kind of not happened as much before, but I remember that happening. Yeah, that, I to get random that's happened logouts. to me before. The only solution I could come up with is now when I need to do YouTube stuff for work, I log in through an incognito window in Chrome and then handle it that way. I just log in uh, manually every time. That's the only solution I could find because I'd I'd be like in the middle of a video upload and I'd randomly get kicked out of Google somehow and it, it would like mess up stuff, so that's the easiest way for me. Yeah, because he would tell me, you are currently signed out while you're uploading this video. I'm like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the funny thing yeah. is... With no, the I've seen it happen issue, a couple times, but it's uploaded for me, though. With, with the whole sign-in issues, what, it's, what has happened is I had to... I, I just I downloaded um, Firefox. So I'm, I'm going to migrate back to, to Firefox because the, the sign-in isn't so integrated into the browser anymore. Oh, yeah. it's, it's overly integrated in Chrome. And it's making my life really, really annoying like right now. Because I, I sincerely have to... I can't go on the web to check my email anymore because mm -hmm. then I have to sign into one account, sign into the other account. Automatically, once I do that, everything then, like all the Google Plus information or whatever is on this other account now. So anything I want to post, if I want to, it's, it's like, seriously, why can't I just sign into a, Google, to a Gmail account without having to sign into Google Plus? You know, like right now, if I basically go to another tab of my Chrome and I sign out because I want to sign into an email somewhere else, it will kick me out of um, this Hangout. All oh. right, don't don't do but that. But like in a bad way. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, yeah, let's just hope that you know these things get straightened out. But you know we're going to be in a lot of growing pains with yeah. Google Plus for a while. Um, yeah, I think we should wrap up. Uh, Raymond says thank you in a way. He says great podcast, guys. You should post it on Stitcher. Well, thank you for joining us, Raymond. We appreciate um, you providing comments and everyone else who provided comments and questions uh, this week. Uh, so guys, next week, what are you looking forward to? It's Thanksgiving. Is there anything you guys are posting up? Uh, any news? Any? Um, uh, we know giveaways are coming down the line, but yeah, anything you guys are... Um, you I'll, I'll jump in first up? because Warren and I are going to be doing a Microsoft Q&A Tuesday, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Any questions that you have about Microsoft products, tablets, phones, uh, laptops, software, uh, we're going to be on hand if you've been curious about any of that kind of gear. We're going to have it you know, live and in person to be able to talk you through just about anything you might want to know. So definitely check that out. It's on my Google Plus events page, on my Facebook events page. Uh, share it around because I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And we're planning future ones on other topics too, like getting this group of guys together just for an experts Q&A on Android or on photography or on recording gear. So uh, be on the lookout for more of those sort of tutorial and Q&A uh, experiences coming down the pipe. All right, pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to tune into that because I'm in the process of going back to Windows and I need to get a new laptop, so I'm going to ask you guys a bunch of questions. So. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Let's do it. Uh, It'll be yeah. one chat. Uh, other that. than that, the only thing I can say is uh, I'm going to have my Lumia 1520 review definitely up uh, Monday morning, uh, so if you want to know more about that, I'm going to have a video written out, photo samples and everything, and uh, later this next week as well, I'm going to review the iLoud Bluetooth speaker. Uh, those are the only definites for me. Hopefully, I have have a couple comparisons as well. All right. Uh, how about you, Warren? Um, next week I'll have I'll have some reviews and a lot of comparisons coming out soon. I'm gonna have an interesting way. I'm gonna do my PS4 and uh, Xbox One reviews. Uh, that'll be pretty interesting. I kind of what I have some ideas for doing that. Um, I'm gonna have some verses coming up as well too, and uh, some, just some general content getting up posted. Trying to. Give you guys some good stuff to hopefully help your holiday shopping a little bit. Well, your shopping in general, but uh, your choices in general. But um, this holiday season, so we're trying to get some helpful videos out there for you guys. Cool. How about you, Sam? What videos do you have uh, coming up for us at Border Work? Uh, I think we got one more of the uh, this upgrade I just completed. So, uh, oh, mind you guys, he did this upgrade after a lot of uh, binge drinking. <laughs> Surprise, the computer works. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It would be interesting building a PC while drunk. That, that's, the new, uh, <laughs> that, that's the new activity. And also there's an all-in-one uh, review that's probably going to be coming up. And, oh, yes, the um, few band fours. I'm going, I'm going to be um, finishing my review up on that in the, in the near future. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's really a cool device. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
All right, cool. Uh, for myself, uh, I just put up my uh, 1520 video review. I haven't done the write-up yet, but you can definitely check it out. It's up there. Uh, I have a bunch of Xbox videos. Uh, I've been doing just little how-tos on different things from the setup to, um, you know, just the DVR. So if you need any videos on the Xbox One, you can check uh, check us out. We'll have more videos for you and a couple of game reviews. And speaking of that, we started a gaming channel which would be, which we try to shift most of our gaming stuff to. Uh, we handle mostly by myself and Sam. It's called Board Gamers, so it's B O O R E D Gamers, and you can definitely check it out. We'll have some gaming videos for you. We'll have more uh, gaming content. So please subscribe to that channel. Uh, we'll have the link with this video. Subscribe to all our channels here. Make sure you subscribe to Mobile Burn um, on YouTube. Also, some gadget guy on YouTube. I'm telling you, he has some detailed stuff. Man. You watch his his speaker uh, review on the Surface or Surface 2. It's awesome. Um, and then also, don't, don't forget to subscribe to BW1.com on YouTube um, and check out all their videos. They have some very good stuff for you guys. And for whatever aspect of tech you looking for. I mean, I think I would say Andrew is like our resident uh, Android guy, <laughs> you know, out there. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and and we know that uh, you know Juan is our our audio and details experts to the core, and of course Warren you know gives us some nice tech perspective with a, a SmackDown in between. So it's like we've all developed Nail our it. characters. We're we're now like a, a crew of tech gadgetry crime fighters. Exactly. And of course, <laughs> of us, exactly. the prize of us are using a turn to deal with it in a lot of videos. And, and, uh, and Sam <laughs> is our our resident uh, fitness guru slash Iron Man enthusiast and um, all around <laughs> All, all around uh, tech guy. So and wearables and futurist yeah. and drunk yeah. computer building. <laughs> <laughs> if if anything has to do with future tech, that is Sam. You know, you know what? We should have a competition. We should all drink and then try to build computers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll win. I can do. That. <laughs> oh, it's on! It is no, on. No, no, no. We I should do that, that live. Like that should be live. <laughs> and and the title, the title game. should be twelve packs on a PC. Twelve packs on a PC. That is great. <laughs> that is definitely great. Um, you know, that's an upgrade. Um, <laughs> like, uh. Matt, Matt asks is a question here, which probably if you check out. Um, um, Juan's um, hangout on Tuesday could probably help you out. He says, "What app selections uh, do you have? Do you like for Windows RT versus Android tablets?" So at least oh. we can talk about Windows tablets on Tuesday. T tune in Tuesday. We'll 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 tackle that question. We can yeah, actually we'll start talk talking about, about software and solutions. Stuff, yeah. Yep. So yeah, yeah, yeah. tune in Tuesday for that. So. All right, thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated for joining again this week. And thank you guys for watching. If you're watching this live, I appreciate you joining us again on uh, our weekly hangout. And if you're watching this later, subscribe to all the channels, keep watching, and always enjoy entertainment. Deal with Boom. it.